damn how's that for an intro <laughs> it was good i liked it you know i did i did have like all the classic 90s cheesy stuff you're telling me the ship is alive yeah <laughs> it's Man, weird like... that that trailer actually had a bunch of stuff in it that wasn't even in the movie uh like a bunch of dialogue and stuff that i don't remember so uh, it's just one of those good <laughs> examples eh, of how they just add stuff in or take it away like midway through production yeah um, I think that's a bit of a story with this whole movie, but I guess we'll get into that in a minute. But hey, that that's probably got my stream demonetized. Don't care. It was worth it just to show it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Greetings, everyone. The drinker is here, and it's almost Halloween, and it's the season of, of horror stuff. And it seemed appropriate that we discuss a horror film tonight. And well, there's not one that's as much fun as Event Horizon that I can think of. And as it happens... I've got a fellow Scotsman here to talk to me about it. Um, welcome back to the channel, Dank. It's been a while, man. I know it's been a wee while, but uh, yeah, good to be back. How you doing? All right, I am hanging in there. Um, I enjoyed your your roast of Count Dankula. Oh, you you got out. a big reaction so when you appeared on the screen. You got a huge <laughs> reaction, not man. Like everyone, the the problem is there was a lot of mixed bag there because there was a lot of people going, Who, "Who's that?" Like yeah. the, non, the non YouTube people were like, "Who is this?" And I've heard like to loads of people, but no, but it was a good night. Thanks very much for doing that as well. By the way, for you know ripping me a new asshole. Thanks, oh. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be wrong not to. You know, it was no, it was my pleasure to do it, man. And, uh, no, it was good stuff. It was fun, and um, yeah, it was nice to see like Graham. Uh, especially like offering a wee apology there. You know, I think and yeah, that, that was a decent that, thing of him to do. That was like a genuine surprise. Like I wasn't in on anything that was happening or anything that was going down. So that happening at the end, like my reaction's a hundred percent real. I had no idea he did that. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was good because it's uh, uh, it's a pretty rare thing these days that people just straight up say, "Ah, right, I had it wrong there, and I'm sorry." You know, I wish. I know it's, it's something that it's something that gets celebrated massively because it is so rare. <laughs> like I was wrong about that. I apologize. Yeah. Like, Holy shit! This man's literally fucking Jesus. Like no one does <laughs> that anymore. <laughs> uh, no, it was good, man. But uh, no, it's great to have you here to talk about this tonight. I mean, um, we were we were batting around like a few suggestions about what we could talk about, and then you'd said like oh, I saw Event Horizon just recently, and I thought perfect. <laughs> oh, <there's, laughs> That's all there was rings of power as well, but fucking hell, man. I'd, it's one of those things where everyone was asking me about it, and I went, I don't need to contribute. Literally, the entire internet is, like, stamping and pissing all over its corpse. Like, it's, it's shit. It's terrible. It is, uh, it's horrific in a different way, but this is uh, this yeah. is a fun kind of horror, you know? It's a different kind. No, I, 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 I like... I like I know, Event, Event Horizon is fucking extremely good. Like, it was... It was one of those ones where it's like, you know how but it has some of that like 90s silliness, but see, because it's it knows what it is, it completely gets away with it. Mm -hmm. It's totally allowed to, but there was one bit in it that made me laugh, and it wasn't supposed to be like a funny bit, where the guy, the guy at the end, where he's like having the visions, and he sees like, I think it's like, a, it's meant to be like a soldier that he left behind in his past. Yeah. You see how, see how the ghost of the ship like uses your own like internal horrors to haunt you? your own yeah. demons, that bit where the guy appears in front of him on fire and goes, you let me burn, oh, like that bit, I fucking started passing myself <laughs> laughing, man, just because I was like, that bit was done so badly, but it like, <laughs> made it like funny as fuck, so, man, but it yeah. was good. <laughs> Uh, there's there's a few bits with that that dude who keeps showing up. Um, there's one yeah. that always stuck in my head as well, where I think it's just a result of like really bad cuts that they had to make to the film. But yeah. it's like he appears in front of Miller, like Lawrence Fishburne's character, um, when Sam Neill's crawling around in the the sort of um, computers underneath the the fucking core, yeah. uh, and all of a sudden like the fire and everything just erupts behind Miller, and he turns around and this dude stood there. Um, and it's like, holy shit, this is like a vision of like a horrific thing in my past. And then the scene just hard cuts away to another scene. Yeah. And I just thought, what the fuck happened there? How did that get resolved? Did the guy just go like, I see you later, man. Just, <laughs> just boo. And then fucking yeah, I, like, I hope we don't yeah. see how it went. Um, but no, I mean, like, I remember watching this for the first time because like, I probably like you, I was too young to see it in the, the cinema when it came out. Yeah. Um, but it was just when it came out on, on VHS or whatever, my dad rented it out. He's like, oh, this is a nice sci-fi movie. It'll be fun to watch, son. Yeah. <laughs> Watched it with him. Came away fucking traumatized from it. <laughs> oh, my, my dad did that with me with the first Alien movie. 
and my dad was like, see when the aliens busting out his fucking chest, like John mm. Hurt's chest. Fucking, I'm I'm sitting there squealing because I'm like a little boy freaking the fuck out. And my dad's like, ha, 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 like laughing at me, <laughs> Be like, ha, 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 mental trauma forever. Like, that. but it ended up becoming like my favorite franchise. <laughs> but yeah, no, but I, I I think one of the reasons is where we like Event Horizon is the way it works. Is it wasn't just some sort of like an alien or something like that. Like it wasn't just oh here's some alien creature loose on the ship mm. because even by the nineties that had been that had been done to death. But uh, it's the fact that I like the unexplained horror, like a universal horror, like space type shit where it's sort of and writers can get away with so fucking much because see if they just go. It's a demon, but from space, they then don't have to explain shit. Yeah, like that, no, I, that's I, enough. <laughs> I agree with you, though. I, I think um, you know that essence of what makes horror so intimidating and uh, and terrifying is the unknown, because you can't explain whatever this thing is that's hunting the different characters. Usually, in the early stages of horror films, that's when they're most effective, because you don't yeah, quite yeah. know what it is, you don't know what it wants, and you don't know what it's capable of. Usually towards the ends, like you kind of understand it a bit more, and then it becomes less scary, and it just devolves into like a chase type situation. Yeah. Um, but with Event Horizon, yeah, it's great because like their enemy isn't some monster that's chasing them through the corridors of the ship, like you say. It's the ship itself, like it's all around them. Yeah, um, and, and it's and that's... it's possessed, but by by like what exactly? It's yeah. never explained. Just evil stuff. <laughs> yeah, evil, evil, spooky space ghost. Yeah, that's <laughs> enough for me. Like, I like that. Um, and I like the fact that it blends together, you know, horror, like cosmic horror and science fiction together, yeah. you know, because it's like it's that classic story of like science going too far and messing with stuff that they shouldn't be, you know, and Sam Neill with his gravity drive that, that opens a, a doorway, you know, to another dimension. It's like, where does it go? Don't know. I'm, I'm well, just it's okay. That, that's the thing, is right? To be completely fair, like science gone too far. I don't think any. I knew some scientists might go, oh shit, they might get transported to like a random universe and then they're stuck there. Oh shit, maybe it will backfire and the ship will blow up. I don't think any scientist went. What if they get sent to hell? Yeah, <laughs> like literal, <laughs> literal hell, and then bring something back with them. I don't think any scientist thought of that. And they're like, ah, worst comes to worst, they get stranded or get blown up. Like that's that, that's all it will be. Oh, be that one Satan. crazy guy in the corner who's like, look, it could open a portal to hell. God damn it! It's like, oh, Larry, calm down. You're always saying it's going to open a portal to hell. The Large Hadron <laughs> Collider was fine. Just chill. Yeah, so then he comes out and he's the expert at the end of the movie, even though he's still <laughs> wearing his underwear on his head. <laughs> oh, man, like, but he's the expert that saves the day and sacrifices himself and all that shit. <laughs> I like, um, I like how it starts though, you know, because you get the little, you know, little on-screen text just explaining what the event horizon is. It's like this, you know, ambitious new deep space ship and all that, and then it vanishes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then seven years later it reappears, and then you just get this really slow tracking shot, like inside the ship. It's this deserted, like it's a Mary Celeste in space, basically. That's what they're yeah. going for here. Um, there's some really shitty, like CGI stuff floating around for us. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's done really badly. Uh, Aye. But uh, and then you, you get that final close up of the dude just floating round and round in the in the bridge area you yeah know, right in on his face it's a nice sort of chilling way to start the movie it sets the tone pretty nicely it's um, very it's very dead space like the way it's been done where it's obviously you go in the ship's like all abandoned it's all fucked up and stuff like that but then obviously they go in and the weird shit starts happening and all that like the the ship starts showing everyone visions because it basically it's the, not known at this point but obviously whatever demon or devil is in possession of the actual ship itself it uses people's what is it their their fears or their um, fears their traumas or, yeah. yeah horrible events in their life and everyone so for like the doctor woman it was our son and it kept yeah. showing like horrible visions of him with his legs all gangrene and all fucked up and stuff like that and that's what ends up making her do Lally. i love i love how her death was just she got off lucky compared to everyone else in the crew. Her death was just she walked off a ledge. I, I think her <laughs> and um, what's his name, Smithy, who, like, I liked his attitude throughout the entire movie because he's like, I'm not setting through it on that fucking ship. I will stay in my spacesuit and just work outside for the yeah. entire film. 
don't care how bad it is it's better than being in there and he just gets blown up it's like yeah you, you know what you were all right <laughs> you uh yeah again you got off pretty lightly <laughs> he did he did the smart thing though that is, that is actually quite funny like in horror movies like people don't usually just go no nah. no nah, move it move it <laughs> Movie over, roll credits, like, that house? Nah, I'm not going in there, directed by... Like, it's like, yeah. fucking... Yeah, he did that. He went, I'm not setting foot in the ship. On you go. And he did, yeah. but he still died, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, you got a great... I love this line as well, where, um, you know, everyone else is starting to see visions and stuff, and, um, you know, they're getting pretty freaked out by it, and they're trying to understand what's happening. And um, I think Miller asks him at one point, you know, Smith, have you seen anything... Um, and he's like, no, nah, I've not seen anything, but uh, I can tell you one thing. The ship is fucked. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's his assessment of the situation. And he's totally right. <laughs> no, he's good. No, he's actually good. I enjoy that. I like, like him. I was going to say as well, like when we were talking about the characters there, like the whole the whole opening scene when, when Sam Neill, like Dr. Weir, gets brought aboard the, um, the Lewis and Clark, I think it's called. The rescue yeah. ship that's going to go to event horizon that's obviously the chance to introduce all the different characters and they do it quite quickly and efficiently and i like you kind of get a good sense of who everyone is like very very quick with this film i think they're they're quite decent at building up these characters you know they've all got their sort of personality quirks and stuff um and they all get their their sort of assigned roles um, yeah and i think it works really well and it helps that they're all played by pretty good actors as well i think that's the thing that makes this film stand out a little bit for me because you know a lot of horror films it's like you know young actors in their 20s who've you know not really done anything but they, they look beautiful and um, they've got no real fucking acting talent and it's just like another generic cheap horror movie to be in but you know they've got guys like Lawrence Fishburne they've got Sam Neill yeah. Jason Isaacs you know all these people Kathleen Quinlan I think who plays the doctor like all pretty talented actors who are a bit more mature you yeah, know they've been around for a while Pertwee actually does look like he would be a ship engineer yeah. if he wasn't an actor. <laughs> he yeah. actually does look like he would be. But it was like, yeah, it's like, instead of the whole, like, teenage fucking cabin in the woods bullshit they put in, right, here's, like, actual people who would actually have these jobs. Yeah. And, like, stuff yeah. like that, and then it made it work and everything. And the, the, the whole cast, they were all already, like, very well known in the 90s. Yeah. Very well known. But I don't think did it did fucking did Event Horizon even do that well? No, no, it didn't. No. Um, I think it came out pretty much the same time as Titanic, and so well, uh, it's, uh, it's never gonna okay. it's never gonna compete with that. Uh, it, it's really unfortunate, and I don't know how much you know about like what went on behind the scenes with this film, but no, um, it was <laughs> the the director Paul Anderson, right? He was going to be directing Soldier with Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, scheduled to come out. Um, Kurt Russell had to build build himself up to get in shape for that. He needed to be big and, and bulked up, you know. And uh, he wasn't willing to do steroids or any of the stuff that actors normally did. He's like, look, I want to do it gradual. Um, my trainer says it'll take me about 18 months <laughs> to get ready for it. And Paul's like, I great. Uh, see you later then, Kurt. I'm not going to just sit around and do nothing while Kurt Russell works out for a year and a half. What can I do in the meantime? And he saw he got the script for Event Horizon. And so it's like, okay, we can we can do this. Um, we've got a pretty short timetable to get it done, but I like the script, like the idea. Let's go. So they they did it. Um, they they produced their initial cut of it. Um, very short amount of time they had. Um, and when they screened that first cut, uh, the the studio executives were fucking appalled by it because this was the extended gory cut. You know, what we get is a really toned down version. And apparently it was so bad, people were like feeling sick and stuff in the screen. And, uh, and they were told like, look, you're going to have to cut about half an hour of footage out of this to make this work. Uh, and so Fuck's they sake. had to do that. They still hadn't done the special effects and everything. So like the post-production was all done in a matter of weeks as opposed to months. Uh, yeah. And it, so it was an extremely rushed film. Um and yeah, it came out around the same time as Titanic, which just 1997, it just dominated the entire year. Yeah, yeah. So it was a yeah. bit of a flop. But then when it came out on home video, you know, it started to do a lot better and it became like a kind of a cult classic over the years. I would, I would say it as a cult classic, like among space horror. And because I'm obviously like alien fanboy, big on space horror. Like I've seen Event Horizon quite a lot of times. Usually we're smoking me because it's, it's just, it's yeah. just one of those type of movies. 
though. But it's 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 like good. It's not uh, even though the CGI is like crap and everything, even for the time and all that. But like the actual movie and the writing, I think the writing was good. Like I enjoyed it when I went. I actually like enjoyed this movie. But I did. I didn't like the bit at the end with like the nightmare. Uh, oh, she woke up from the, the pod. Aye, that little thing. I was like, oh, that's fucking stupid. Shut up. That, that's, <laughs> classic, that's a classic bit of 90s cheese right there. Aye. Yeah, yeah, that bit. But I, I did like it. The fact that was it. Well, two, two of them made it out fine, essentially, except for the boy that threw himself out the airlock. He was sort of. <laughs> Justin, I. Uh, he was sort of like kind of alive, <laughs> I believe, but like yeah, they were pretty much life. like when you open up this tank, you're gonna need a sponge or something because he's gonna like spill everywhere. But yeah, uh... he's just gonna. Uh, and also, uh, he get pulled into hell for like a whole minute, so he's gonna need like so much like mental health assessments and shit <laughs> like that, man. He was like, and literally, yes, in hell for like a yeah. whole minute. Like we were trying to pull him out, but the cable wouldn't come and all that, and oh, it was horrible. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that is probably going to cause issues later, you know, yeah. further down the line. It's like, what did you get up to? Well, I went to hell for a minute or two and I threw myself into the vacuum of space. I was so horrified by what I seen. Yeah. <laughs> I threw myself into space. I don't think it was him, though. I think he was like half possessed because see, when the door started beeping, that's when he like comes back and he's like, What am I doing in the airlock? What's going yeah. on? Open the door. And then he gets fucking sucked out. Aye. So you could kind of you could question whether he remembers any of it or whether it was just yeah like he was possessed by something and then you know that's left him but it's hard to say really uh, either way he's probably not in for a good time when he wakes up no um, for all we know that like, time time dilation that minute might have been like three years <laughs> like and... I, well, he went, <laughs> basically he went through a black hole didn't he to get there so who knows yeah. what that does to like your your concept of time or whatever yeah. It's like three thousand years have passed. He just comes back. <laughs> he just comes back as Doom Guy. Yeah. <laughs> All these things are fun to think about, though. Well, that's that's the thing, yeah. uh, That's the sort of um, possibilities this film opens up, and it's um, it's what's so fun about it. There's a lot of unknown elements that you could wonder about. Um, the fill in the blanks type of thing, which is common whenever you're doing like, is it is is that the term cosmic horror? I think like, so, yeah. The big, the big unknown in space, like sort of like demons and shit like that. I because that that stuff that stuff is sort of like they do try and pull a little Lovecraftian thing where they kind of go, "Oh no, it's so bad, I literally can't describe it." Hmm. That's how bad it is. It's awful, yeah. <laughs> like that type of thing. And you do, you can just let the audience fill in the blanks. But well, what you, you do... there's there's an interesting oh. thing right that comes up like towards the end of the movie and i guess everyone remembers it is that crew log scene where they they the the video log that was kept by the previous crew um it had been yeah. like scrambled or something and they finally were able to decipher it um and you get to see what <laughs> you get to see the fun stuff that went on when they actually went to hell like they opened up the yeah. gateway and it's just <laughs> fucking hell oh, uh, the, i think the, the thing one... that really sells it is like one of the characters just sees it and turns away immediately like she's just like i don't want to see it i don't want to hear it um you know yeah. and then the camera like snaps to the, the actual footage itself and it's just people like having an absolute orgy of of blood destruction i so but the guy's holding his eyes and his hands and all that shit yeah. man it's like because they, they do that bit at the end where you get instead of just seeing it through like an old tinny monitor like the characters are you actually see like the full image and it's that the bit at the end that people were memeing on in the chat. Uh, do you see? Yeah. Do, do you see? see? Like that bit. And there's the bit that got me was well, the guys get like the spike coming in the back of the neck, and it's coming out the mouth, and it's like some, to... it's like some scorn. Like see that game that's out scorn. Yeah. It's like that type of shit, and it's fucked up, man. I've still got memories of being a kid and like having the VHS of it and <laughs> pausing it just to like because it's very like one or two frames. That's all you yeah. get, and so you've got to pause it to if you want to see it properly uh I, it's proper horrific stuff but like i say the original version would have been much longer than that and um that that crew log scene that you get again that's very cut down there's um yeah i wish i could find the because I, I once found like a, a sort of account of one of the people that worked on it because they had a whole like second unit team of people yeah. who were it was their job to put together this this whole sequence um and they were they were talking about <laughs> well there's there's one an account here from jason isaacs here who was in the movie 
Uh, and he describes some of it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little quote here um, about the director. He was doing things that were, I've no doubt, against the law, <laughs> certainly against <laughs> every ethical and professional guild code. There were, <laughs> there were porn stars, there were amputees, there were people recruited for S&M clubs. There was some stuff going on in there. Every now and again, he would walk over to our set with a kind of Vietnam War thousand yard <laughs> stare and go, you wouldn't believe what I've been seeing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the original version. Why didn't the original version like? Why didn't they just release like a later supercut? There's unfortunately a tragic story to that because this oh, was fuck. done in the days before they had digital footage, you know. So right. it was all done on, on like literal film reel, and so when you've yeah. got that cut footage, it's just you know basically you've got to store it somewhere. And I kid you not, right? This is this this is the story that's gone right on the internet, and this is apparently what they did. All okay. this footage was shipped over to a salt mine in Transylvania where it was stored underground on the idea that it would be a cool, dry environment where it would be preserved. Um, but for whatever reason, the film you know, negatives were spoiled in the time because they, they did eventually think we should dig this stuff up and do a director's cut of it. So yeah. they went to recover the footage, which was the only copy, uh, and it was ruined beyond use and so there'll never be like a proper extended cut of event horizon like what they originally saw uh tragically so we'll never see what it what it could have been nah, that is terrible i do actually kind of believe that story though because see using old salt mines because the salt absorbs all the moisture in the air a lot yeah. of places for like works of art digital prints or like old technology they get stored in these big underground storage units that are old salt mines so i yep. do kind of believe that story but i want to know how it still gets spoiled yeah uh, well, whether it was like shit. i don't know um wasn't sealed properly or something or maybe there was yeah. some moisture in it i'm not sure but yeah from what i've heard it was degraded to the point where you couldn't use it you know it just would have been fucked uh, the, se the, se the secret orgy event horizon tapes located deep in a dungeon in transylvania I know, it's, sake, it's, man. <laughs> it's the stuff of legend honestly you couldn't make this up but it's just yeah. great i, lo I love that <laughs> ah it's fucking uh, unfortunate though because I, I feel like even though it's it still managed to achieve its like cult status i think obviously with all that extra footage given what you've fucking just told me i think it would have ended up being like just an absolute banger I, I think, uh, yeah, you, you know, the bits that I saw described, uh, it was like, you know, um, <laughs> there was a reason they hired porn stars, basically. <laughs> there was a lot more sex scenes in it. Uh, there was a bit where they had, like, prosthetic breasts on a woman that a guy would reach behind and just literally tear them off. Um, Fuck there was sick. bits with people getting, like, drills put th right through their teeth and stuff like that. And I uh, just... Horrific stuff, but it would have been impressive to see because I would imagine it was all done with um, practical effects and makeup. Cause, like you couldn't really do it with CGI, but yeah, 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 just to see what they produced from that, it would have been would have been interesting if nothing else. But I guess that's what happens sometimes. Eh? It's just one of those what ifs. Um, nah, that's disappointing. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. But I did. Like, we were talking about the special effects in this film, right? This is a movie that you know. This is a sort of late 90s, so it was really before CGI got good. Yeah. Um, and I think they used a lot of miniatures for it. So the Event Horizon, when you see it outside, it's a, an actual scale model of the entire thing. Yeah. Um, and I do quite like that because it does look good when you get those long panning shots over it and stuff. It's just where it goes wrong is when they've got, like, say, things floating around in zero gravity um, inside the ship or, like, liquid things, like, floating in midair. It all looks yeah. very very fake and cheesy uh, but i love all those exterior shots because the the event horizon itself it looks just like a terrifying ship like even just when you see it from the outside you're like i, I wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to serve on that thing it just looks like what bad stuff goes on there yeah like that that long corridor going all the way up the middle as well when they're like looking up and down the ship and then they're looking down at the core and all that, like, I did like that, that, I'd, like, the aesthetics of it, like, when the crew are just sitting around the ship and everything, and you can see that red mass in the background, whatever it's supposed to be, like, growing up into the light. That yeah. bit where they came on the ship and we went, we think this is some of the crew. It's like we don't know. It's like we just got <laughs> splattered all over the wall. And it's yeah. Like, 
Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to have to press a button on that instrument panel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and when they notice that, like that, but even when they're just talking and that's just in the background and stuff like that, like I don't know why it's just like I think visually, like minus the CGI and stuff like that. Visually, I think they did like really, really well. Like no, I think with, so. Yeah, with a short amount of time that they had, the the set design and stuff, like you were saying, I think is great. You know, the Event Horizon, like inside, it's got a really unique look to it. Um, you know, even in those early scenes where it's nothing horrific's happening yet, like they've just like gotten to the the bridge and you know switched yeah. all the lights back on and stuff, but it just looks mean. Like you can see in the background just where we're talking here. Actually, this is the core um, of the the ship, um, but even that, like that's got the same design aesthetic as the rest of the ship. There's just loads of like metal spikes sticking out of everything. It's just like yeah. It's like some underground torture dungeon, but like with a sci-fi edge to it. It's a, it's like a very the, cool idea. The meat, the meat grinder thing that you see as you're walking into the core, like that rotating corridor with all the big blades going mm. up it and stuff like that. Like that's just, aye. There was a, the design of that. I sort of like to almost look like cheesy, like eighties gothic. It almost looks like an old, like not eighties, eighteen hundreds gothic. See, so like those old gothic style buildings. It's kind of like that, but with like a modern obviously like a futuristic twist on it like a little bit like the decals of the ship even those things in the background like on the wall all over the core that are pointing at the core like even them yeah um they when they designed the ship itself like if you see it from above apparently it's laid out like a crucifix uh like a like a gothic cathedral <laughs> ah right uh, same with all the, the sort of like buttresses and stuff and all the the spires on it and stuff it's, it's meant to resemble a cathedral in space which you know ties into that, know that kind of aesthetic which is really cool it's i just like the fact that the, the the production guys thought of this stuff they thought like we want to give this thing a unique look it's not just going to be some sleek modern looking spaceship it's like this big towering fucking gothic space cathedral you know yeah it's cool no. it what it works really fucking well with it as well it does um, I people like there's a lot of people in chat saying like because this is the classic thing right the, the event horizon is what happens when you go into the warp without a Geller field it's just ah. like a 40k <laughs> reference there you go <laughs> <laughs> but I can get that you know um, I, I like the fact that you know when you do see that crew log of what happens to you when you go into the, the hell dimension it's not like there's actual demons like hanging about in the background or there's fire and stuff everywhere. It's like yeah. everyone has just gone instantly insane and started like just mutilating themselves and fucking each other and stuff. Like, um, I don't know. It plays on that idea that it's just a dimension where, where insanity reigns. It's not like there's anything physically horrific. It's just what it does to your mind, you know? Which yeah. Is it's, cool. it's sort of like they don't even put them in it. They just let them see it. And that's how fucking bad it is. Mm. <laughs> Man, don't even have to be there. You just have to see it and it fucking drives you insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real Lovecraftian thing, isn't it? Like That is. Something yeah. driving you instantly insane when you look at it. Oh, it's really bad. It's so bad. Couldn't even describe it. It's not that I'm lazy. I just, oh, I can't tell yeah. you how bad <laughs> the bad thing is. You should just know it's bad. It's so bad that when you see it, you go literally insane. And all, but, the pro- evil. but the problem is that really works because like the thing is even though you're kind of like that's just lazy if you were reading the book you'd be like oh oh scary <laughs> but yeah but it works well think about like that bit that we talked about where justin gets like sucked into the core and he's only in there for a minute or so he gets pulled out he's comatose and then he, he tries to kill himself because what he saw was so horrific yeah that's effective because it's straight in, in your mind it just conjures up you know all these ideas of like holy shit what he seen was so awful like he just wanted to instantly kill himself yeah you know, that's, that's not, not, not even and not even a quick one of a you know a slash of the wrist or a bullet to the head they wanted to throw himself out the airlock yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fuck's sake <laughs> It's got to be bad, yeah. Um, uh, but I think it's, obviously, like you said earlier, like that that really works with horror. Because like, I think one of the main reasons that all the Alien movies were very, very popular is because you barely saw the Alien. If you saw it, it was for like a frame or two, just a, just a flash of it on the screen. Even in Aliens, like the second one, you know, the James Cameron one, where there was all this action and aliens everywhere, 
aliens were still only ever on the screen for like a couple of seconds at a time. Yeah. And everything. There's there's even one scene during the big firefight where they catch them like walking across the ceiling where you can tell it's a fake alien that someone's just thrown <laughs> like over a table and you can kind of spot it a little bit. It only appears for like a flash and everything. But that that's why it works. And this is the one thing that annoys me is in all the new ones that came out like Prometheus and all that, she's seen a fully animated CGI alien seen it on the screen for ages and running around and it doesn't work it, no, it just, it's not scary no. anymore no no it's not no it, it's it's always been the essence of horror i mean if you go all the way back to jaws you know you only got to see little glimpses of the shark and a lot of the time like the attacks were shown from its point of view rather than the, the, yeah. the victims uh, partly because the fucking robotic shark kept like sinking and breaking down and stuff, so they they had to do it that way. But it works because it's this unseen, terrifying threat, you know. And that's the the power of the audience's mind to conjure up, you know, horrifying things is more powerful usually than what the filmmakers can actually show them. Yeah, you know, it's it's and it's an interesting thing to play with. That's why the the most effective horror movies are usually pretty sparing with their monsters because they. The more you show people, the less terrifying the thing becomes. I think it's because you're letting the audience member as well as they know it's supposed to be a scary movie. So whatever their vision of the monster is is going to be a thing that they find scary. Yeah. Like, and you'll get that. Where I was like, I've, there's been horror movies where I've seen like the creature never and I went, that's fucking gay. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at the look at the fucking state of that thing, man. Like, there was one. There was one fucking. <laughs> movie i forget what it was i forget the name of this film but it was so stupid well it was these like american tourists like teenagers we're going to go to like chernobyl we're going to chernobyl on like a tour on like a tour and they get lost on the tour and it turns out there's like radioactive like devil people like living in like fucking chernobyl and Pripyat. And there's a bit where the camera manages to show you one, and it's just some fat guy. It's just, <laughs> it, he looks like fucking Don Vito, you know, Bam Margera's uncle. He fucking looks like him. And all the, they're all screaming and running away and everything. I'm fucking killing myself laughing. And after that point, I was like, this film is not scary anymore because I know they're just being chased by a fat alcoholic Russian. <laughs> like and like not by some demon or creature or like weird devil person. It's just a fat guy. <laughs> aye. That that's aye, the Chernobyl diaries that was. Is that what um, it was? Yeah. yeah. Aye. But uh, someone else has said here, Michael House and uh, Jeepers Creepers, that was a good example actually. Like the, the monster in that, you you see it from a distance a lot of the time, like under shades, yeah. like under a tree or whatever. Um but when you actually see it in the finale, it's like, oh, it's just just a guy with prosthetic makeup on. It looks really shit. I uh, like Fred, Freddy Krueger on a going through a goth phase kind yeah. of like yeah <laughs> with his fucking Van Helsing hat and all that stuff yeah I get yeah. it's been a it's been a very long time since I've seen Jeepers Creepers but I do like vaguely remember that and the the scene that always stuck with me right is when they're driving past its house and it's like <laughs> dumping a body um, into a pit or something like you just see it as they go by and then it stops and just kind of looks at them as they're driving past and it's like it's funny because it's in broad daylight. And so it shouldn't necessarily be scary because it's not a typical horror setting, but it's like just the, the notion that this fucking thing has seen you and even though you're driving away from it, it's like it's going to come after you, isn't it? And it's like it's under the shade of these trees. You can't see its face. It's just this vaguely humanoid figure. Yeah, It just works really well. I don't know why, but it always stuck with me. No, I, fucking, I don't know if I remember that scene because it's, it's been a very long time since I've seen it. Um, but I want to talking about event horizon there um i've got to give props to sam neil just for his amazing scream because <laughs> i've used it i've used it so many times in my videos and i just well, love it what one was that well he they're on their way to the event horizon right and he's already starting to feel the effects of this thing because he has this dream and when he wakes up from his his like hyper sleep thing yeah and he's like walking through the the ship and um his wife is sat there on a chair, like butt naked, and he like yeah, spins yeah. around. She's got like <laughs> her eyes are like missing, uh, and she just like I don't know what happens. Like spins her around, and then she vanishes, and then she claps her hand right on his shoulder, so he spins around like what the fuck, and uh, like I, you just see that her eyes have been ripped out, like out their sockets, and she's like I'm waiting, and then he just goes ah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I think I think I can remember that. It's yeah. the most drawn out, ridiculous scream ever. But um, <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, wait, I'll, I'll maybe see if I can just find it here. Hold on, because um, it has to be seen to be experienced properly. Just give me one second. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got it stowed away somewhere just for situations like this. Uh, all right, hold on. Skip it forward a wee bit. Better be careful in case you see tits. I'm waiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. dumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, uh, I always equated it to like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, right? But you've had like a nightmare or something and you're kind of half asleep and half awake. Um, and you, you almost like to, you want to cry out because you're scared in your dream. But it just comes out as this like kind of pathetic moan. Um, I, I think it's, they were almost going for that where you can't like move properly or anything. And it's just like the camera is right in on his face. It's it's a weird one, but I don't know. It's, it's funny <laughs> if nothing oh, no. else. I don't, I don't scream, right, and Su Sue's actually, my wife's actually pointed this out to me, like, you know how you have a fucking, a dream where, like, you turn around and you get hit by a fucking bus, or, like, you fall off a cliff or something like that, like, one of those nightmares where you freak out because you know you're going to die, so I've had those dreams, and every time I've woke up, I've shouted, oh, yeah, fucker, <laughs> right, <laughs> oh, yeah, fucker, and that makes me go, right, hold on, that means... My last words, most likely, if I ever die in an accident, are going to be, oh, you fucker. Like, That's the best <laughs> way for a Scotsman to check out. Like, <laughs> Oh, you fucker, bus. <laughs> Just like, man, was, uh, that, that bothers me, that that's going to be the last words that come out of my fucking mouth. <laughs> like, like something your grandmother says when she spills the tea. Oh, you fucker. Yeah. Like, for yeah. fuck's sake. Uh, that's a good way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I did like Sam Neill in this, and I tell you as well, um, I don't have the scene handy, but like the, this is the thing that's been reused in so many movies, right? When you want to describe how like a, a warp drive works, it's oh, like you've got a piece of paper, the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? what's the quick, the shortest distance? Well, yeah, fold it and then push the pencil through. Uh, it's been done in like Interstellar and a bunch of other things, like I can't believe they reused it. Um, but they, see, they did be, it see, be honest though, I think it's just for like idiots in the audience because it actually is the easiest way to explain how like that shit's supposed to work yeah you know man but i yeah they do use that an awful lot <laughs> um i i've got to give props as well to to coop you know um he's uh i can't remember the actor's name uh, I wanted to say Tay Diggs, but it's not. It's a different one. Oh, dude, I've got the stuff. Richard, Richard T. Jones. I think that's the one, yeah. Um, yeah, he ah, is. Uh, he's great. He's really fun. He's like he's obviously the comic relief character, and I think the movie kind of benefits from him because it might just, like, without that, without a little bit of levity from time to time, it would be so bleak and so fucking yeah. um, depressing. Um, there wouldn't be as much fun with it. But yeah, he, he just, uh, I love how he's trying to crack on with Stark and he's like offering everyone coffee when they've just woke up. And he's like, hey, what about you, Stark? You want something hot and black inside you? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, no, he, he was funny. They did, he was a bit caricature, though, when he's like, he gets blasted off the ship and he's basically he's feeling like, oh lord, oh shit, oh no, <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing in the space, oh hell, oh damn. And, oh, and then he fucking manages to like get his way back. Yeah, he, he, as well. Because uh, he blasts all the air out of his oxygen tank, right? And so he's rocketing towards the ship at probably a thousand miles an hour. going to impact <laughs> it. And he's just like, here I come, motherfuckers! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're waiting for him at the airlock because they think it's the fucking other guy. Yeah. And then he comes in like, don't hit me! Like, Peter just falls into the fucking ship, man. There was, there was so many times. That, see, getting blasted off into space like that, he should have absolutely been dead, but he's the only one that lives. Yeah. <laughs> you know, man, apart from, like, the women and the fucking <laughs> mental trauma patient. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting one because... Like we were saying, the, the whole point of this ship is that it's going to 
it's going to start showing you like the things that you're most traumatized by like it, it's almost like it finds your own personal weakness and it uses that against you yeah. which again i think is an interesting idea because you know rather than just being a, a big scary monster with like teeth and tentacles and all that stuff it's like it uses your own your own mistakes against you yeah it shows you know, visions so with, of it yeah so like with miller it's like a guy who he left behind in a, a, a you know an accident or something that he's feeling guilty about um with the doctor it's her her son with the you know his disabled fucked up legs um and then yeah like other characters it's a bit more sketchy like you don't really understand what it's um what it's using against them but jason isaacs had a, a really good example of this right um because his thing is that he eventually gets killed by Dr. Weir. He gets, like, cut open and all, yeah, his, yeah. all his organs just get, like, splayed everywhere and stuff. So I know, he gets hung for the ceiling, like, all yeah. opened up. Like, that. I remember first seeing that scene years ago, even though I was, like, 17 or some shit, man. Like, that fucked me up a little bit. Mm. I was just kind of like, Jesus Christ, that's fucking horrific. <laughs> man, like, fucking really good, though, like, visual-wise. He, he hadn't been told what his character's fear was or anything, but he, in, on his own... Um, on his own initiative, um, he had the, the the makeup department do like a fake scar going right down his chest, and mm -hmm. you can just kind of see it briefly, like when when Weir sort of rips open his shirt. There's a big scar that goes right down the middle of him, and his his thought process was like he'd he'd had a major operation when he was younger, uh, and it left him with like scars and like trauma from having gone through it, like because uh, right. I guess it was all uh, like. And you see him every so often, he kind of just reaches up and sort of touches his chest like there's pain there or something. And that was all just his idea. And I think it's just a great example of how they got good actors in who took it really seriously. Uh, and that was all just, you know, on his own uh, on his own idea. I, I, never, I never even clocked that. I never even seen it's, that. You have, yeah. to, you have to kind of rewatch it and pay, like, yeah, and look for it. But he did that thinking about it. Um, and so it's obviously... I guess a reflection of his own fears, like that he does die by getting cut open and like all his organs just pretty, out pretty, of him. pretty fucking badly as well, like, yeah. like a really, really bad way, like fucking yeah. hell. Um, but I like all that stuff. I think is really good, and um, yeah, like I remember as well when. Uh, they start having like all these electrical problems in the ship, like lights start going out and stuff. And yeah, um, they they send Doctor Weir down underneath the the core to like look around because there's like circuits that have blown out. Ah, uh, the and little then... circuit board like crawl space like fucking thing yeah. that they send them into. And, yeah. and like all the lights start going off around him, and you know he's like, ah, I need some help down here, and like nobody's answering him, and then it's just dark, and he like puts on his flashlight, and then there is his wife again. You know, like right beside him, and then it just flashes off. Just little moments like that, I think, are, are pretty yeah. good. Like little jump scares and little tension building moments, I think, are, are pretty good. Especially yeah. being in the being in like the cramped fucking space and stuff like that. That makes it a lot fucking worse. Yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. no, that helps with the fear. Uh, and like, obviously, his his guilt is that his wife took her own life, and like he's obviously felt guilty about that all this time. Uh, I don't know what he he, he gets he from. gets shown he gets shown like the full vision of that at one point as well, doesn't he? Where he's mm -hmm. sitting next to her and she's she's sitting in the bath and she's got the razor blade and he's sitting pleading with her and begging with her and everything. I think is that not the final thing that pushes him over the edge? Yes. Like because he gets to see the full vision and then after that he becomes. I mean, is he <clears throat> is he still Doctor Weir or is he? satan or something like that at that point like he, you don't ever really figure out what he actually is he's changed it, it's a funny it's, one i because yeah. he's he's already been going a bit mental up until that point and he's yeah, been yeah. getting more and more erratic and um then he sees that vision and you just you just see the camera kind of pan away from him and he's like ripping his own eyeballs out so he's, you know, he's having a great old time doing that yeah and then he somehow finds he makes his way to like the other ship, blows that up with one of them charges things that are meant to like block the corridor um, between the two different sections of the event horizon, uh, and then goes up to the bridge and he's like talking with Miller, but so he, he's got no eyes, but he can still apparently see everything that he needs to see around him, and then he gets just blasted out into space, but then he comes back again as like 
a demon form of him. You know, he's like naked and he's got all these like weird runes cut into his skin and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's like, two, and you get two different he's, he's got his eyes it. back. Has he got his Aye. eyes back again at that point? Yeah. He does, yeah. Um, I don't know if it was going to be too impractical for them to do a fight scene when Sam Neill couldn't actually see what he was punching. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been fucking good. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Um, but I, this is like, um, yeah, I always think as well, it's, it's kind of funny because like, you know, when towards the end of the movie, like Lauren Swishburne's decided, right, what we're going to do, we're going to blow up the corridor in the middle of the ship, right? We're going to set all these charges and it'll blow up because it's designed to do that. And we'll escape on the front bit and then the, the core can just fuck off. And so he has to. <laughs> He has to run down this corridor that's probably about five miles long. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and set each one of them individually. <laughs> I thought, how's this supposed to work in an emergency? Like, imagine, a, oh, shit, the core's melting down. We need to get evacuated. <laughs> like, well, give me three hours, sir, and I'll make my way down the corridor. <laughs> set the charges and leave. Surely it only needs to be, like, one part of the corridor, like, to blow up. Like, you just need to break one little part. I don't think you need to do it, like, all the fucking way down the whole thing. I would assume not. No, it's just done yeah. for dramatic effect. Because it looks great when you see it actually detonate, and it's like... Ah, uh, yeah, going up the ship. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you, you have to question how useful that would actually be in an emergency. Or, you know, could you not just have, like, I don't know, a clamp or something that just lets go? <laughs> it just lets you leave. Like Yeah, I'll just... <laughs> Just pull, pulling the chain out like a fucking train, just letting just... the carriage float away in the background like that, like fucking. You know, in like Star Trek, like the Next Generation, how the Enterprise can split into two. You know, if it needs to, like sometimes the 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 rear section can separate from the the saucer section. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen. I've not. I've not seen that. No. Well, it, not, never been, it's never been back on like, Star Trek. If, if they're ever in the shit, like the rear section is the bit with all the weapons and stuff on it. So it's like you could separate and the, the forward section could escape and the rear section could like fight off whatever is attacking you. But I just imagined, like, imagine I had to do that every time. Like, I had to fucking detonate, like, all these explosives to get separated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we destroyed another ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm seeing people like asking for like an actual dead space movie, but I just think it would get hit with the video game curse, and they'd it's, fuck it it's up. A bad one, yeah. I know they would, but it's just like Dead Space, great game, scary fucking game, scary as fuck fucking game. Like there are parts of it where it's like not fun, not because it's a bad game, but just because it's that scary and stressful. Yeah, and I've done like fucking like the bit, the bit, like at the very start of the game as well, where it just throws you in a room with one of like the fucking alien things and you're like oh i don't have any weapons or anything yet so this must be a cutscene. no it's not <laughs> like you're in there with the fucking thing and all you've got to do is fucking run and try and get away from it and that that's that's like panic inducing that just kicks off the anxiety like that's good so like as a game it's good but it's the problem is there's, pro there's probably a couple of directors out there that could make it a phenomenal fucking movie but whether or not it'd be any of them that get it. Well, were they not saying that uh, John Carpenter was interested in doing it? And I thought that would have been great 30 years ago when John Carpenter was still doing good stuff, but uh, now he's, yeah, he's, he's a wee bit past his prime now for this stuff. I can't even tell you, like, obviously, like, I love the thing. And, uh, like, that's that's a fucking banger, but, like, what's he even done, like, recently? I don't even, I, I don't even think I've heard no. of anything he's done. No. Uh, the last thing no. I think I saw him do was like Ghosts of Mars, and that was, well, that was a movie. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was just, I've, I've never heard of that, but just for the title, I was a bit, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not great. Um, it's no. got Jason Statham in a very early role, though, you know. Really? Aye. <laughs> uh, Natasha Henstridge is in it as well, and she's, she's still pretty hot, so that's that's to its credit, I suppose. But yeah, you could tell it was done on a very low budget. <clears throat> and it shows because they're trying to do big like action set pieces and it's like yeah they, they don't have the they don't have the resources to do it ah uh, right fair enough did you um i did you see the resident evil netflix show that they produced uh i think uh <laughs> i got to the i got to the part which was about five minutes into the first episode where 
they mentioned all these fucking white people in this neighborhood and I got <laughs> I, I got up and went out to go for a smoke and then I came back and sat down and saw Black Wesker. Yeah. <laughs> Man, and I was like, I think me, me and my message, I always I always do this. I'm gonna give it a fair shake. I'm gonna give it a fair shake type thing. I, I got to the end of the first episode and I think I got a little bit into the second and I just went like this is fucking stupid. And I'm like that fucking flashbacks to high school bullying crap. I was like, I'm immediately disinterested in this. It was so bad. Oh, it, it was, was just can horrendous. I, can I show you something? Like, because I don't yes. know how far you got into it. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can. Right, go on. I'm go gonna on. show you this. It was uh, Lance Reddick. Um, hold on. Oh, let's see. Uh, I'll see if I can view the image. Um, all right. Basically, you get to see him later on when he's in in full on Wesker mode, um, because like I, I, when you first get him, he's yeah he, he's kind of just like a, a father, you know he's um, he's yeah. not really recognizable as as what Wesker's going to be, but uh, I'm just trying to bring it up here. Uh, you do get to see him when he's uh, when he's in proper Wesker mode, and I'll just all right. It's it's a sight to behold. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna share it and all right, brace yourself. Oh sweet Jesus, it's fucking Did... blade. Yeah, that's just blade. <laughs> I know, man. Like every, I'm, I'm expecting you to hear that fucking techno tune, that fucking do 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 do. do. <laughs> like, that, man, that that is just blade. That's why it's a Like that, that is, that's fucking terrible. That's because so the thing stupid. is, Lance Reddick's a cool guy, right? But he's, he's yeah. got a very different kind of coolness than Wesley Snipes. And so trying to put him in like yes. the sunglasses and the leather trench coat and stuff, that's that's not really what he does. You know? Nah, I've, I've, I've seen him in a few things and I don't think Albert Wesker was a role he was supposed to have. Because Albert Wesker's like the cheesy 90s like villain. Like with this fucking slip back, fucking like blonde hair and other, he looks like he would be in any other position. He would be a fucking hedge fund manager with yeah. a cocaine addiction. Like that's what that's what he looks like. <laughs> but fucking nah, it doesn't it does not fucking work at all. But I, I made I made it one episode, and I just thought like this is this is fucking garbage. I was not interested, and just I, I had to suffer through it to the end because like I was going to review it, and I thought I need to give it a fair shake, and fucking hell, it was painful. Yeah, right, funnily enough, yeah, it was cancelled after one season. So who could have predicted this? That's happening well, a lot. Have you noticed? Have you noticed yes. that that is happening a hell of a lot? People are starting to realise shit. I think people are wanting good films and good TV shows because they're not watching this shit. Who who could have predicted this? It's like we've uh, yeah we we instead of lecturing people about present day social issues in a fucking medieval fantasy series or or you know sci fi horror whatever. How about we just write a good story and just have some fun with it? That's, ban that's crazy. liberal arts students from the writers' room. Just ban yeah. them. Just don't let them fucking in. And not man, because mm. they're they're interested in being little fucking activists and not actually. How can we make the good movie good? No, how about how can I make the movie spread my message? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> did Fuck you, off. Um, get another job. Did you hear anything about She Hulk when it was out? I never I even don't... bothered watching it. I I saw. I saw people talking about it and shitting all over it, but I try and do this. Oh, I'm going to watch it. Maybe it's something I'll actually enjoy. And I'm on. I saw, I saw like the twerking scene, and I just went, "That's fucking." I saw gifs of the twerking on like Twitter, and I just went, "I'm nah, I'm not interested." And then I saw the whole fucking that that whole scene where she's like, "Men whistle at me when I go down the street. <laughs> I'm shut up, shut the fuck up, you dumb bitch." Like, so I, I, I control my temper, and I'm like, "Shut up." Like that, that immediately disinterested me. I haven't seen a single episode, haven't watched it. I've well, just what seen clips. Just to uh, just to give you a little bit of context, what happens in the final episode, right? Like it, it's set up to be your typical Marvel thing where all the, the heroes and villains face off against each other and everyone ah, just shows right. up for a big rumble. 
and then she bursts out of her own show and goes into like Marvel headquarters and demands that they change it because she's like, this is shite. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I, I want a different show where like people take accountability for their actions. And I just thought, oh, you fucking arsehole. Like you've not oh literally, you've literally not taken accountability for a single thing you've done throughout the whole show. Uh, but I guess those <laughs> rules just apply to someone else. And it, I just thought it was funny because the, the, the bad guys in this... So they are, did like a full fourth wall break. Yeah, like, yeah. Like it, it, it basically seems to skip out to the, the Disney Plus screen, the home screen with all the different Marvel TV shows and stuff. And then she like kicks her way out of the She-Hulk panel. Oh and like God. climbs down into something else, um, but like the the showrunners did an interview afterwards, and they were like, "Yeah, the the real enemies in this, the bad guys, are internet trolls who oh criticize our show." Mm. And I just thought, how interesting is it that you knew your show was so shite that people were going to absolutely pile in on it, and instead of just thinking, you know what, we'll just make a good show, they thought, "Nah, the best way to tackle this is we're going to do a fourth wall break," and attack them directly and you know pile in on them for daring to criticize what we've made it's like it's we made a giant approach. pile we made a giant pile of shit and we knew you were going to call it a giant pile of shit so it doesn't count that's all it is <laughs> yeah like, yeah that, that's fucking stupid it's like oh. just acknowledging like a criticism or a problem doesn't make it go away you haven't addressed it you've just said yeah, yeah you know i've preempted it so <laughs> joke's on you I knew you <laughs> like were going to be. I actually knew you were going to be angry after I punched you in the face. So you can't be angry at me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like that. That's not how that fucking works. Like it's this fucking. Is, this is where we're at, though. Like uh, yeah. it goes back to what you said. For um, the writers that they hire now are activists first, um, and and freeloaders second, and writers like a distant fifth or something. Yeah. You know, like they they don't, they don't care about storytelling or anything or telling any kind of good story, good entertainment. They just care about their message that they want to inject into it. It's just propaganda stuff. And I think it's, and it's happening because you're seeing shows getting cancelled left and right. Apparently, I don't don't quote me on this, but apparently, was it Warner Brothers? But they wrote off, like, was it Batwoman or something? They just went, Batgirl, we're not, yeah. Batgirl, <laughs> we're not, we're not even going to release it. We're just going to put it down as a tax write-off and fucking that can disappear into the fucking ether. For all we care, apparently they're going to do it. What was it like? Thirty-two billion worth of projects. We're going to get the same fucking treatment. I don't quote me on that. I might have that number completely wrong. No, no, you, it's but, not thirty-two billion, but it's it's a lot of um, projects because Warner Brothers is pretty strapped for cash, and they basically run the numbers. And it's like, well, to release this movie, say Batgirl, for example, cost ninety million dollars to make. So that's ninety million dollars down the shitter. But it would have cost another ninety million to promote it once they released it, and so they they thought to themselves, "Well, we're never going to make that back anyway, so it's cheaper actually to just shit can the entire thing and not even release the thing," um, and that's what they've done. But you know, like they've they've gone in a whole new direction now, and they've released movies like Black Adam, which is, nah, but it's got no messaging in it. It's got no woke stuff in it. It's just a generic superhero movie. And I think that's what they're aiming for now. Um, it's, so, it, it started hurting the bottom line fucking everywhere, by the way. Like, this whole woke activist has. fucking shit, like, fucking Netflix's stock kept fucking up because they kept getting into controversies. And the problem is, it's like, it's the same, it's the thing is, that, like, they're not just going and making their own shows, they're going and taking stuff like Resident Evil and just taking a great big steaming shit all over it. And then... Basically, if you go into someone's house and break all their fucking stuff, they're going to be fucking angry at you, right? But instead, these people try and use it as, like, marketing, like, ha we destroyed something the trolls loved, and the trolls got mad about it. That's how good our show is. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. I've, I've talked about this. this is, they, they call this, like, it's fan baiting. It's, fan it's baiting. an actual marketing technique now, because what they do is, like, they'll take over some IP that's popular, uh, they'll announce their casting, and it's like, Hey, you know all these characters that used to be white? They've become like black women or whatever for some reason. Um, yeah, aren't you mad? Don't you want to protest this? Don't you want to say something about it on the internet? Go ahead. You know you want to do it. Do it. And so people do, naturally. And then they're like, well, that's our, our actors getting like racist or sexist harassment. 
Uh, that's the kind of toxic fans that are dealing with this thing, and it's all free publicity for their show or their movie. Yeah, and that's, that's when you get made. that's that's when you get to like members of the cast go like tweeting out, "I stand in solidarity with yes. my my co-star who got like two racist tweets <laughs> sent to her and stuff like that." And it's just like, oh fucking. Have, have you ever noticed someone actually work this out? Whenever you point out. That uh, some like celebrities get a bunch of racist tweets. The racist tweets then like increase like tenfold. Yeah, and all that. Basically, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Just point it out, and then they'll actually start getting those types of tweets, and then you get proved right. Yep, and all that. Like, yeah. And you know, I'm sure they would never, uh, they'd never stoop to the level of using sock puppet accounts to actually manufacture controversy against celebrities oh, that definite, they could form for uh, for not. views and attention. They, they, I think that was something they that. noticed. Uh, a lot of a lot of Twitter accounts that were doing that get made in like the same month that the controversy happened. And you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was weird. That was strange. But that's that's what it's become now. But yeah, like you say, um, it, it ultimately kills their bottom line because it might get you some short term attention, but it doesn't actually like result in people watching your product or supporting it or whatever. Um, that that happened to basically see that's what happened to places like BuzzFeed and Vice because over the long term they were destroying their reputation. Like see for the, and then they started getting rid of the departments that like made the money. So see how like BuzzFeed had like this stuff about oh white people, this is a message for white people and blue and like all this crap. Those were getting fuck tons of reach, fuck tons of engagement, fuck tons of money. Right, but those types of articles about this is ten reasons why white people suck and all that stuff that was damaging their reputation over like over a long period of time. So they started going, oh, we're going to shut down like the tech news section, the gaming section, and everyone because even though those were completely fine sections, they weren't making the money. So instead, they put all their focus in all the fucking bait articles, which you know worked for a short period of time, yeah. but eventually you just completely alienate everyone from ever viewing you, and that's why BuzzFeed are just they're fucked now. Yeah. They're a fraction of the size that they used to be because they took the the short term high gains instead of you know actual longevity, and I think that movie production studios are starting to feel that now. Instead of going out there and rage baiting and going, oh my god, look at all the free press we're getting, you, you made everyone angry. That's why. If you make people angry yeah, I mean, enough I, times, they're not they're going to stop watching your stuff. I, I've mentioned this before, right? Um, Top Gun Maverick that came out months and months ago was the absolute like, you know, it was the thing that that absolutely shattered that illusion that a movie has to be, uh, despite all this like corporate messaging and social activism and stuff. It was like an absolute throwback to the nineteen eighties like action movies. It's just a bunch of heroic characters doing a heroic thing. It portrays like things like the U.S. military in a positive light. It's it's got like an aging white male hero who's still awesome at what he does, and he doesn't need to be like deconstructed. And people fucking flock to it. It was like giving a bacon sandwich to a starving fucking dire wolf. You know, like, <laughs> that, that that that's what it was. It was like finally a fucking movie that's just entertaining and fun, and you come out the theater feeling good about yourself. And it was like that's been an absolute drought of things like that in recent years, and people flocked to it. It made a one and a half billion dollars, insane amounts of money, um, and it proved that. And I think it absolutely sent like shockwaves through the industry. People suddenly realized, holy shit, this works. This is what people actually want. They don't want the fake activism. They don't want to be lectured. Um, and we don't need to pander to these fucking morons on Twitter. You know, that's that's yeah. not our audience. It's never been our audience. They just make lots of noise, but they've got no actual power. And the moment yeah. you realize that, they fucking vanish into the ether. That's what I'm, they need to do. I'm, st I'm starting to see it go away because I don't know if I mentioned that, but I think we, me and you might have spoke about this before. Remember I talked about the Hayes Code the Hayes Code in the past. Well, basically, uh -huh. for anyone for anyone that doesn't know, the Hayes Code was like a series of rules that Hollywood had to obey back in the day. So there was like things like you were not allowed to show mixed race couples. You weren't allowed to show white people as slaves. You weren't allowed to uh, no uh, no gay no gay whatsoever at all. <laughs> Your movie would get shit canned if there was even a hint 
of that in there. There was so many like rules and regulations that get put into movies, and like if you didn't obey the Hayes Code, then you would get your ship pulled out of production. Like people wouldn't work with you, producers wouldn't touch you, none of that stuff. But all that ended up happening was see because all movies were preaching this is society, this is the way you should be, activism, activism, activism in everybody's face. They just tuned out of American movies completely and started watching foreign stuff. And the foreign stuff, like the spaghetti westerns produced over in Italy, fucking banged. Like they, everyone wanted to see them. And everyone, you know, the strong male character, blah, 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 and all that type of stuff, who who does some cheeky things, you know, a little bit, you know, where they aren't sure a bit of an anti hero because he does stuff that's a little bit dishonest, but deep down he's a good guy. Under the Hays Code, that wasn't allowed. People like the main guy had to be pure. Had to be a pious and pure man. You weren't allowed anti-heroes, but the American market died. Like fucking, they they were they couldn't compete with all these foreign films that weren't restricted by these rules. And even though all of this was in the forties and fifties, like they made movies to like stop a societal shift. Oh, let's stop us shifting into like, this left-wing liberal fucking weed smoking hippy dippy shit. And then the fucking sixties happened anyway. Right, so see how this <laughs> see, see how this controlling media to get your political activism like through it doesn't fucking work. Eventually, everyone just tunes out, and society shifts anyway. Like, it the, work. I've always I've always called it the "fuck you" factor. The more you <laughs> command, the, it's true though. The more you command people, like you have to listen to this point of view, you have to think this way, you have to respect this group of people, or listen yeah. to these people, or whatever. Uh, the more people just go, fuck you, I'm just going to do the exact opposite just to piss you off because you're being such a dick about it. And that's that's where it's gone. That's where, where Hollywood has gone. Uh, I do that as well. It's people yeah. so much. And, you know, people like Ricky Gervais have articulated it far better than, than I ever could. You know, saying like <laughs> you're sitting there in your fucking million dollar mansions lecturing working class people about how they need to do better and live better lives. Fuck you. You people have never endured a single moment of hardship in your entire lives. What right have you got to lecture the rest of us? But, you know, that that <laughs> needs to be said because the, these they're not there to lecture you. They're not there to guide you. They are professional pretenders, as Gary likes to say. They're the court jesters yeah. of our world. You know, I got, I, I, team. I got to do that in DMs with Seth Rogen himself. I saw that, I know, man. man. I they just, were beautiful. I, there's a, <laughs> the, I love I love the fact that he had no comeback whenever I said to him, oh, maybe one day I'll be as funny as you and all my jokes can be dude weed lamau. <laughs> that man. And he, he had nothing to come back with against that. And I was like, holy shit, I just won an argument with Seth Rogen because he doesn't have a response to what his comedy actually is. That, and, oh, that man, dude that is like... <laughs> the ultimate example of like just you know you've become so high on your own farts that you can't even perceive reality anymore yeah um, and for like, someone well, of such my... limited ability it's baffling it's fucking uh, it's, it's like i will say like super bad banged i liked super bad it was a funny movie like i enjoyed it right but then then it then just i don't know what it is he just started he sort of did the adam sandler thing but the difference is, like, you know, where you just start producing really bad shit, like, later in your career. But the difference is we all felt bad for Adam Sandler. <laughs> like Seth Rogen, think, we don't well, feel bad for the, him. At least Adam Sandler was aware of what he was and what he was doing. Like, <coughs> Seth Rogen somehow convinced himself that he was, like, this deep-thinking, like, political, social commentator. Um, and it's like, no. well, like you pointed out, like, he made his entire career on Dude, My Weed Jokes. You know, yeah. he, he's not a deep thinker. He's not a man who's qualified to give opinions on this stuff. And yet, he does constantly. Um, what What do you expect people to do except to tell you to shut the fuck up? You know, that, that's... It's, it's, what was his fucking rant about how Casey... It all started with Casey Neistat raging because his fucking, like, car got broken into and yeah, stuff Yeah, and he was like, oh, my car. car got broken into, like, ten times. And it's like, you know, oh, someone dude, got left oh. a knife and it was a prize. It was great. Oh, dude, it was, like, totally fine. My car got broken into. You're a fucking millionaire. You're a fucking multi-millionaire, you actual idiot. Like, what if it's, like, a single mother of three, car gets broken into, fucking purse is gone, kid's Game Boy gets stolen out the back, so that's his week ruined. That was a birthday present that he only just got. And then Seth Rogen turns up, like, it's actually fine. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Fucking, like, he's, he's, like, that is when you get that rich that you just are completely clueless about what average people go through all the time. And, oh, man, like, see, like, 
see having your car broken into, see if you're already like struggling with bills and shit, that can fuck you up for months. Well, like, you've got your, to replace yeah. the, the, the window, if nothing else. Like, that's like 50 quid at least for a new yeah. window for your car. Uh, maybe you want to make a claim on your insurance. Okay, you've lost your no claims discount then. Your son, your premiums have gone way up. Like, all that stuff, yeah, it fucks you up. And it's it's not something that you make light of. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's just part of the joy of living in a big city. Just have fun with it. Like, fuck <laughs> off, Seth, you prick. <laughs> It's fucking LA though, man. LA, LA is like a horrible place. Like, see, see in Glasgow, whenever junkies approach you, and you never feel in danger. You do, you never feel unsafe when a junkie approaches you. See nah, in yeah. see in LA, in LA, it's a different story. They they come up to you with their eyes rolling into the back of their head, like <laughs> communicating with demons, like like that, like like they're aboard the Event Horizon. One of them just comes up to you holding his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> liberate me <laughs> liberate me <laughs> do you see <laughs> do you see that fucking in the streets of LA <laughs> fucking skid row man but yeah like that, places like that are fucking terrible they're just absolutely horrible and all that but that's where like he lives and he's big like multi-million pound fucking mansion like even even notch is like even Notch when he bought his big fucking mega palace in Beverly Hills is pure said like oh it's fucking terrible here it's awful here it's a shite place never move here it's fucking <laughs> it's fucking terrible I wish I never bought this house <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it's God yeah I I'm just I'm so glad that you shared that with the rest of the world just like how much of an absolute bell end he is. Uh, um, it was fucking, it, it, it kind of hurt though because I was like, "Oh, I actually used to really like you. Now I kind of fucking hate you." And all that, man. Like it's fucking. No, there's nothing worse. See, see when you're like, see when you get to a point where you're fucking reviled by everyone. Like you, you get to a point where, see when someone, some celebrity that you actually really liked, says something bad about you, and you're just kind of like, "Ah, oh, ah, oh, fuck, <laughs> man, I actually really liked you." <laughs> It's like all those childhood memories, like Father Christmas or something, just being like, oh, fuck you, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, I've been abandoned by everyone. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, there's a, there's a little message for you here from the quartering. Uh, I mean, Event Horizon is cool and all, but can we talk about how kind of was diet of burnt steak and inflation porn are leading to perpetual daughter making? I'm I'm actually I'm starting to actually get very annoyed by the, the, there's these memes where people just make shit up about me, but then the community acts like it's not fake and accepts it as complete fact. Like the burnt like burnt steaks, I don't eat burnt steaks, but it's been accepted as universal fact. I don't <laughs> actually like inflation porn. I just at one time said it was funny. <laughs> right, and now and now everyone is pure like spreading around that I'm pure into that. I see like conversations happening on Twitter like is he actually into inflation porn? I'm like, no. <laughs> I said during a Discord call that I thought it was funny. And then all my mods were like, ah, this guy lack inflation porn. And started <laughs> posting it everywhere. And now it's been accepted as fucking fuck up. There's Jeremy in the chat. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> fucking What's dick. He he's just, he's shouting liar in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get you. Uh, yeah, you don't. So you don't like burnt steak either. You don't like it. Well done. No, I don't. I don't like burnt steak. I get it. I get it either rare or medium, depending on the type of steak. Well, there we go. We set the record yeah. straight on that one. Yes. So at least that, that, that irrelevant, it. irrelevant that we've set the record straight. It doesn't matter. See, see that conversation that we just had. Everyone's going to pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, Event Horizon. It was a it was a fun movie. <laughs> <It was. laughs> we got from Event Horizon and fucking Sean Pertwee to fucking inflation porn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it keeps with the theme of Event Horizon, really, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, if they had a bit of that in the the crew log, that would have been a whole different video, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Was he be honest, man? Like the stuff they saw on the screen, you probably would see on most like Rule Thirty Four boards or something like that, man. Like hentai art's getting a lot weirder. I recently. suppose, yeah. This yeah. is this is, I guess, like um, the world that we've moved into now, isn't it? Because stuff like this 
was shocking and horrifying back in 1997, but now it's just like, yeah, this is an average day on like Reddit or something, you know? Yeah, that was a fact. They kind of talk about that how uh, if there's stuff that you've just seen constantly, like all the time and everything, like remember, remember, like back in the day with the Exorcist, people were like fainting in the fucking cinema and like shit like that. Whereas if you watch the Exorcist now, it's kind of like. Yeah, it, right. about, yeah. There, there's some pretty crude bits in it, but like it's not yeah. horrific to the point that it would make you feel any like ill or anything like that. Yeah, you, you might know? you might like jump. You're not going to like fall over the fainting couch or anything like that if you saw The Exorcist now. But like basically, people say that uh, it comes to a point where everyone gets that used to it that it's like never enough. They actually spoke about this and what's that sci-fi show? The fucking one where they jump into skin suits that get altered carbon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Carbon. They talk about it where they basically say, what was it, mankind's tastes evolved so much that reality could no longer <laughs> deliver it. Mm. So that's why they had to create like virtual reality, like fucking things that could actually give them like the experiences that they wanted to have because everything else just became so boring and they were all living for like 300 years. It's like Slanesh. Slanesh would have a field day with this because. Yeah, I guess I... it's a natural <laughs> result of like, yeah, that uh, that constant desire for like the the newest high, like, and it would lead you into down a path of hedonism, you know, where yeah. it's like cruelty, sadism, all that stuff, like the most extreme emotions you can imagine. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it kind of makes sense. And you know, are we reaching that point with entertainment where it's like, well, we've seen the most horrific stuff you can conjure up like nothing's going to shock people anymore nothing's going to shock audiences well it's like the, the average horror movie is like a serbian film level oh christ and, no, and, 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 that. that's that's one movie that i'll truly like never watch again i think i didn't even make it all the way through there was just parts of it where i just went nah this is this is disgusting I... like i actually I actually no it's not not often i'll say this i was offended yeah, <laughs> I was offended, and I went, "I do not like this fucking movie. This is horrible." It's uh, I. That, that raises an interesting point, right? When you talk about movies like that, because I, I haven't seen it. I've read the synopsis of it, and I've watched little clips out of curiosity. But it's like I don't want to watch it. Um, yeah. But then, is that an argument for like should that should that be banned? Like, is that does that a film that goes too far? Is that like beyond the bounds of of like reasonable <laughs> entertainment? I would say, I would say that it shouldn't be banned, but I'll still say that it went too far. Mm. <laughs> like it, it went too far, but no, it shouldn't be banned. But it was fucking, it was it was bad, and it was just like I, I was half paying attention to the story. There's been very few things where I've actually felt sick. Like there are movies where I thought that they were astounding movies, even though they were horrible to watch. You know, things like Grave of the Fireflies or Precious. Or something like that, like movies that were just so gut wrenchingly horrible to watch, but still like great films. Like Serbian movies, just a bad film, and it's just horrible to fucking watch. It's not even a funny laugh at it, like The Room, or the <laughs> or like Starship Troopers, like five, six, seven, and eight, which apparently fucking exist. They're so bad though, <laughs> but, but like, uh, but like, it was just bad. It was just uh, not not enjoyable in any fucking way. Yeah. No, that's that's for play. Uh, I mean, I think um, you know I've watched other films like um, Human Centipede Two, where it was along similar lines, where it's like really pushing the boundaries of of what's. I was going to say good taste, but then it's beyond that. Even it's like, what would you even consider acceptable entertainment? Um, like I, to... I think the reason Human Centipede, everyone was like gutted, like feel like oh, that's a fucking horrible movie, and the premise itself was like fucking out there and everyone. But I think the reason that movies like that didn't get like the treatment that Serbian film got is they didn't include actual scenes of like literally like raping children. Yeah. <laughs> like I think that's that's a hmm hmm not not quite, <laughs> not quite yeah. sure. like that. I think that's why movies like that get a pass and that went on to become like a cult classic like human centipede like everybody understood the reference like shit tons of people seen it. Serbian film doesn't have a cult following because you'll get people that are even into that shit if you're going that was a fucking horrible film that was actually like disgusting it's, and it's not even a good film to watch it's just bad yeah um i've got uh i've got a few super chats here if you've got a wee bit of time i can maybe try and go yes, for a few i go for um, it man sure they'll be for both of us um 
Kung Fu Hot Dog says, Hey Drinker, I hope you got to London Comic Con, or sorry, I hope you go to London Comic Con next year. Would love to meet you. Count Dankula, I want to buy a cat soon and teach to salute like the Germans. Okay, get a lawyer. <laughs> get you first. in trouble. Marksman of 117B says, It's a girl, kick with Dank. Welcome uh, to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to say congratulations, man. You got another kid on the way, so that's awesome. Uh, infor- unfortunately, it's a girl, and uh, I fucking hate women. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now I'm going to be in a house fucking full of them. I'm out so number. Twitter tells me, you know. <laughs> yeah. <I> know. <laughs> uh, next one is uh, JS Pena says confession. I wasn't a big fan of this movie. Well, I think you need to leave the chat right now, sir. That's unacceptable. <laughs> that's wrong. Think. Um, G- also from JS Pena also Count Dankula what happened to Buddha's eye oh it's a long story he was, he was getting babysit by someone who uh, apparently Buddha had an accident we didn't believe her version of events uh, so we, uh, basically we tried to save his eye with a bunch of operations but it was, it was someone who was babysitting him that did it to him and we didn't really believe her story we'll leave it at that oh shit man I'm sorry Ah, it's fine. Fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angry Batman says, this movie always scares the hell out of me. Indeed it does. Um, also from him says, also please give a shout out to my boss Ross who got married recently. He loves this movie almost as much as his wife. Go, Ross. <laughs> Be sure to tell her that. <laughs> uh J.S. Pena, by the way, if you need to find an actress to play a badass ally or femme fatale in your short film, I recommend Tatiana Dekitar. Ah, let me have a look at this. Let me see what she looks like. Uh, Tatiana. (laughs) Whenever I look for Tatiana. (laughs) Alright, let's see. What is she? Uh, I'm not actually getting much from that. Oh, wait, actually... Yeah, okay. She's about the right age. Late 30s. Yeah, okay. You bet you're going to Harvey Weinstein and I had to look at our pictures first. You want to be a star, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit down on this couch here and I'll make a star. <laughs> can, I get a, can I get a part? Can I play Angry Man in Crowd number three? I, I honestly, if you feel like you can hold a gun and get shot, then you can absolutely be in this movie, man. I can get shot. I've got, I've got. There's a lot of people out there that actually want to do it. Yeah, it, it's awesome, man. Honestly, um, like, well, I, you don't need me to tell you. Like, the response has been unbelievable. Like, we we got like ten times our initial budget that we wanted to try and get for this thing. Seriously, so, uh, fucking hell. Aye. We wanted 20k, we're, we're at like 209,000 at the moment to to do this thing. So unbelievable but um it's great it means like we can actually do much better action scenes we can do proper like pyrotechnics instead of doing cgi blood impacts and all that we can do squibs and explosions all that good stuff yeah um so yeah i mean hopefully it's going to be the start of like a whole bunch of like bigger and bigger projects you know um but yeah it's i don't know man it's maybe that's how you know there'll be a whole cottage industry of, of movies getting crowdfunded instead of like the, the traditional Hollywood studio model. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what you're becoming here? You like critique and review movies and stuff like that. You're going to be one of the ones where the director goes, we'll do a better job yourself. All right, fine. I fucking will. Yeah. <laughs> right away, you prick. <laughs> I mean, it's a tough one. Like at least, you know, I'm not going to be the, responsible for directing it or any of that stuff so i'm writing the script you know that's that's kind of on me but uh, yeah. beyond that you know um i have to just trust to their abilities and it's not an easy thing to do because it's like you know you're kind of associated with it you've got hope that they're going to do a good job but yeah yeah just have to see what happens i, I suppose man but hey if you're willing to fly out to canada i can absolutely get you a part in this one <laughs> fuck it, yeah fuck it why not <laughs> <laughs> Flying out to Nick- Canada, get shot, go home. Yeah. <laughs> Stop one a day's work, really. Uh, RRTNZ says, Hail Chads. First saw this movie in the cinema in 97, having slept three hours and three days. I was dozing in and out, not sure what was a nightmare and what was the real film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, imagine waking up and seeing that. Um, 
Unhinged says, I love you for this and more. Oh snap, there's a brown sugar pop tarts in the vending machine at work. Oh, there you go. All, all, all good stuff in life. Uh, Daniel Monroe says, yes, Drinker and Dankula. Two legends discussing a legendary movie. Beers at the ready. This stream is going to be awesome. Dank, your roast stream was epic. Drinker, congrats on Rogue Elements. Cheers. There you go. Cheers to you, man. That was a wholesome one. It's weird. Most of my... my um, Super chats are kind of nice, believe it or not. Like they're they're not telling me to die or anything. So that's that's a must bonus. be must be nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> profiting off other people. Like yeah, like even if people are sending you super chats and it's like, oh, you fucking prick. I hope that this ends you. Um, you know, you're still making money off them ultimately. So <laughs> there's something good coming out of it. Um. Big Dave K says, question for Dankula. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Death Stranding. I ask because I've seen a wear Bridges hat. Also considering running as First Minister, the drinker as Deputy First Minister. I think we could do that. I could make it I could make it happen. I would do it. I would absolutely do it. Fucking as for Death Stranding, I'm gonna have a controversial opinion here. Fucking loved it. One of the best games I've ever played. That's gonna divide the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was because everyone calls it you're you're an Amazon delivery driver. That's what, that's your job in this game. You literally deliver pizza for some of your missions, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, you do, but you're not understanding the meta uh, symbolism. <laughs> it's, this that, game, it's, it's actually really deep. Is this game like full Hideo Kojima? Full Hideo, yes, because it is full Hideo Kojima. He was not restricted by any studio. It was completely a hundred percent him. He even called it the first ever strand type game, and I'm like, nah, shut, shut up. I, I do. <laughs> shut I, up. You made yes, that. Up. Yeah. I wonder sometimes if Hideo Kojima needs to be restrained a little bit by a he studio. Does. There's, there's some. There's. I love the overall arch and theme of the game and the story, and there's a lot of Kojima like fourth wall kind of stuff in there as well. There are some parts where I, I want to choke him. I just want to, I just want to like hold them down and slap them around a little because there's one bit, Mario and Princess Beach. I don't know if you've ever seen that scene in the no. game. I want, I, I wanted to stuff Kojima into a locker for just that one scene. I'm like, this is like a pure heartbreaking, like important moment, and you threw in that absolutely stupid fucking line that does not fit and does not make sense. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, he's it's really good. I mean, I've I've often thought he like he's either an insane genius when it comes to storytelling, or he's just insane. Like, and I can't make up my mind which one he is. Because is it going like, to be like the end of Trump's presidency where we just got to go, guys? I don't think it was four D chess. I think he was just kind of retarded the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think this guy's a genius at all. Yeah. <laughs> But you, you could be like, oh, you know, was Boris Johnson planning to get fired from PM so that he, he could eventually get re-elected like after nah. Liz Truss got put out? It's like, well, I don't think so. I think he was just shit. You know, it's like... There's... <laughs> yeah, I think the, the reality is often a bit more banal. Um, Daniel Mon Monroe says, question for Dank. Uh, will you do a Mad Lads for Carlos Hatchcock at some point? Uh, some of his stories are up there with Samo uh, Haya. Simo, Simo Hawa, that was a uh, oh, white death. I'm going to double check it. I've not heard that name before, but whenever I get one recommended, I usually Google it and, and see. Right. Uh, Canon Folderov just says, ah! Uh, oh! <laughs> 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 uh, DB says, uh, did your folks scare you uh, like on your roast? Did what? Uh, did your folks scare you like on your roast? I don't know if this is a question for you. Oh, right. Uh, my mum and dad used to like fucking give me frights and shit like that and like scare me when I was a child. Um, so uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Just Incredible says one of the ultimate 90s cult movies, indeed. Uh, I think the point where they bring techno music into it, I just knew I was watching a late 90s film. Yeah. So. <laughs> Bill Stevens, I can't. I, I'm going to say as well. I can't believe this movie was directed by the same dude who did the the Resident Evil films. Really, same guy. Was it Paul Paul W S Anderson? Yeah. Fuck's sake. 
He did Something Mortal like Kombat, right, which got him noticed. Then they, they gave him this gig. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, oh, God. <laughs> oh, that fucking bit with Scorpion and Johnny Cage is still one of my fucking favourites. It's one of those movies where I remember going to see it as a child and figure, oh, my God, this is fucking amazing. Yeah, this is so good. I'm going to go home and play Mortal Kombat in my stairs right now. And then I rewatched it as an adult, and I went, "Oh my god, this movie's so stupid! It's, it's so a crap." Whole prospect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking that bit with Scorpion and Johnny Cage, though, where the camera just pans round and nothing's there, then pans back and Scorpion's right behind them. He just obviously yeah. stepped on screen when the camera panned away, and he just goes, "Welcome!" and punches him in the face. It's a fucking banger scene. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> The CGI in that was something else as well. Oh, Get over was... here! And like fires the fucking thing out of his wrist. And it doesn't even connect to his arm. Like it's yeah, that bad. It's, it's, ah, it's fucking terrible. But it's good. <sighs> it's like it's like a shit good. A shit yeah. kind of good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Bill Stevens says turns on his Scotsman to American translator. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been alright tonight. We should be understandable. Um, so. Super uh, Saya Isaac says Event Horizon is the greatest movie ever made, bar none. Well, I think uh, nobody here would dispute that. It is literally the best thing that's ever been done, ever. Um, <laughs> Mitch Thibault says Much of the missing footage in the trailer is from the director's cut. Unfortunately, we will never see it. The original reels degraded beyond recovery. Yeah, like that tragic story I told you about the salt mine in Transylvania. Man. Oh. Yeah, what could it be? Uh, bloke with superpowers says tell us a little about your pup and give half to dank for deodorant love you both <laughs> what <laughs> a, little, a little about what pup pup uh the critical oh. doggo like neither of them are actually here tonight I, they're in the the living room the other side of the house so <laughs> yeah once greyhounds decide that they've they've found a place to lie for the night that's it you're not going to shift them unless you've got a forklift truck or something so yeah <laughs> just leave them there yeah, it's probably better anyway because when I when I finish this stream and go to bed, they'll start pacing the house because they, they need to follow me. Arseholes, honestly. <laughs> the thing is, you can't you can't just like call their bluff because they might just shit on the floor. You never quite know. Uh. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, the next one is Jobs McGee says Event Horizon, the non-canon Warhammer 40k prequel. That's it. <laughs> I said it before. It's the warp. Uh, Tyrell by Fun says, watch Black Adam. DC are learning, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, Dank. Black haven't Adam seen it yet, no. Um, no, I haven't seen it yet. This is the first movie, because Warner Brothers ha has a new guy who's heading up all their new films called David Zaslov, and he, he's the guy who shit can movies like Batgirl and Supergirl and stuff, uh, <clears throat> which were basically going to be all about the message. Um, and he said, no, we, what we want to do, right, and bear with me on this one, because it's crazy, we want to just produce entertaining movies that are there to be fun for people. Mind-blowing. You know, like crazy <laughs> yeah. stuff, crazy stuff. I, th um, I, I this think is... this man might be a pioneer. I think he might be going somewhere, man. I mean, you know, fucking, it's a crazy idea. I mean, not, nothing like that's ever been said in the production room for quite a few decades now. It certainly has. Not at Disney, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> but he's done it, and uh, well, Black Adam is the test. And if it does well, then I think he's going to have a free reign to do whatever he wants with DC. Um, there's another one just before we go on. Uh, Mr. Brown Alliance, he's almost at 1,000 subscribers. He's one of my mods. He does a fantastic job, and uh, his channel is the one that spawned people like Little Platoon, um, who's done amazing reviews of like the Rings of Power and stuff. So... Uh, he's almost at a thousand subscribers. If you could maybe consider giving him a wee sub, uh, the link is right there. Um, I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure he'd appreciate it as well. It'll get him monetized. We can do it. Come on. I believe in you guys. I'll leave that there for a few minutes anyway. Um, next one is Chuck Miller, who gave me a super sticker for $10. So thanks, man. Uh, DB says, have you both seen Life Force or Threads? I've seen both of them. <laughs> <laughs> threads is fucking traumatizing man have you ever heard of that no it was made back in the 80s right and it's like a mini series I don't know if it was BBC or ITV that did it it was a British production and um, it's about a nuclear war and it's they, they actually like did a lot of research for it and they made it as accurate and realistic as possible and so 
you know, you get the immediate effects of like, you know, British cities getting vaporized by the nuclear bombs and stuff, and then the survivors having to rebuild society in this like wasteland with like, you know, fallout everywhere and stuff, and it's just got the most grim, depressing, bleak end imaginable. Um, it's a really good, you know, horrific view of that. I mean, it's. I was going to say it's less relevant now, but you know, maybe it's. Yeah, uh, well, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's that sounds like my jam. Actually, I'm going to make a. But yeah, back in the eighties, it was uh, it was noted for being particularly like just, you know, gruesome and and bleak and and traumatizing for people because you know it's yeah. an innocent time, you know, and um, yeah, it's always gone down in infamy as one of those things that people remember. It's like it's it was the watership down, uh, of of. TV shows Fucking for adults. Fucking watch down. Jesus <laughs> yeah, I knew uh, that was going to have that effect. Yeah, I uh, know. I get traumatised as a fucking child because my fucking that was my grandfather was babysitting me and my sister one night, and we were like fucking like like seven years old and like four years old, and he went, "Oh, I'll rent a video for them to watch." That's got bunny rabbits on the front of it. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just a nice little happy cartoon about fucking bunny rabbits, and then we were fucking traumatised. <laughs> I I remember, and I I kid you not, right? Some sick bastard at like the the BBC decided they should show this at Easter. <laughs> and I watched it for the first time. I watched it for the first time at Easter, thinking like you, it was going to be some feel good movie about bunny rabbits and stuff, and it was horrific. It was like Saving Private Ryan with rabbits. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what it is where they just kept, they keep losing more and more of them as time goes on. Oh, you know, like, oh fucking hell. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, next one is uh, Noxide says uh, sci-fi is a perfect catalyst for stories of the unknown and discovery while fantasy is great for the imagination. I can totally see how horror is joined at the hip to sci-fi for many tales of fiction. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if sci-fi is about pushing the, the boundaries of what's possible and our knowledge, then inevitably you're going to come up against stuff that you don't understand and the inexplicable. And I think horror just dubs tales perfectly with that, you know? Yeah, no, it definitely. I, I still think it's really good that whenever, whenever you don't show the monster, people create a terrifying image in their own head. So basically each person's each person is getting a unique kind of fear because it's one that they had to create themselves in their own imagination. Um, oh, shit. Something came up in chat as well. Wow. The animals are farthing wood. I don't know if you remember that. I, I would I've about, heard I've heard of that, but I don't know what it is. I think it was about eight, nine years old when that came out, and it's like Watership Down. It's like all these different animals, they got to go from like one part of the country to the other, and they just start getting massacred. Like rabbits, pheasants, fucking foxes, they get shot, they get Holy eaten. Holy shit, I remember this. I do remember this. I tell you, man, right, children's TV shows did not fuck around when we were kids. <clears throat> I tell you, you learned some harsh lessons about the reality of life back then, and that's why I drink so much now, to, to dull the pain <laughs> of farthing wood. Oh my god, I've, 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 just, I've, I've searched it. And there's a fucking screenshot of a rabbit just screaming while inside like a wolf's mouth. Like, that's so fucked <laughs> that's up. That's animals of farthing wood right there. <laughs> Holy shit. That's it, yeah? Oh, God, that was awful. Fuck um, me. Next one is uh, XSL, who says, if you had to go Hitler mode on people and complete removal of a behavior, which would you do? If you were Thanos, which would you cut in half? Uh, Journalists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I don't have to say anything to that. Yes, this is the perfect response. <laughs> um, Jonathan Pitcher gave me a hundred dollars. Thank you very much, man. You didn't even say anything there. You just gave me the money, so thank you. Um, Jin Korea says my favorite two mad lads. Event Horizon, good choice. Thank you. Um, Thomas Chipperfield, Hail Drinker, and Daddy Dank. I'd love to see a mad lad on Obi Wan Nairobi. Also, the man ears of. Savo would make a great animal mad lads. Uh, I don't know if you want to make note of that one, but I've never heard of that one. Man eaters of Savo. How's that? How's that spelled? T S A V O. Right, I'll make a note. Uh, 
Jill Warden says, Dank, can you explain to the drinker about the joys of Dave and Buster's when in America and the heart attack pizza when you were in Chicago? How about shooting guns as well? All pure Americana. I do miss Dave and Buster's. It was basically like putting like a giant arcade like you used to get at the bowling, mm. but combining it with a spoons. <laughs> except except the food's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it well. was not like spoons then <laughs> yeah exactly but it was just like i li I liked it and i enjoyed it because i got drunk i got to play house of the dead nice. all night and everything and i just i just had fun and i enjoyed myself right and it's, it's cringe it's embarrassing dude because like a barcade but it's like for adults because you can play games and drink and everything it feels what's, like what's that, bad man. about that though that's fucking great Playing okay, House of the so... Dead and getting rat arsed at the same time. Like, that's that's fine no, by me, man. No, it's fun. It's good fun. It's just that, I don't know, some people say that it's a bit sort of cringe soy boy bug mannery. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was... Uh, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Can't just do that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've been in... Uh, I was in New York and Washington just like, a few weeks ago and fucking love the... the because New York's like the home of like big like deli diner type places where you like yeah. you order a sandwich and it's like this fucking high, um, and I just I love that stuff, man. And we just don't get anything like that here. There's no equivalent to it, and it's it's a real shame. <laughs> you get a row a Roan square for Mary's Mary's fan. <laughs> man, that's what, trying to that's explain what to Americans what a square sausage is. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it's like a sausage, can, but it's square. Can I get a it's square like... sausage and a tatty scone? <laughs> 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 there was um oh yeah shooting guns you don't have to fucking sell me on that one I, every time i go to america i try to make time for that that's great fun. yeah um, when i did it when i was in tampa um it's very easy to do down in florida so yeah love that um i think mr brown he's almost at oh no that's my second channel that's not what i want um, post the link to your your channel, mate, and uh, yeah, I think he's almost at a thousand from you, lovely people. Smash. Uh, next one is um, G Unit. He says, "Have you seen Peter Jackson's Great War documentary? They shall not grow old. If you like 1917, oh. you're going to love this one. It's told in the voices of the men who were there." No, it's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting off for anyone that's not seen it. Uh, definitely go watch that. They will. They, I don't know if it's they shall or they will not grow old, right? But there's a part that happens in it that will fuck you up, and it's the, the thing that makes it worse. Is it's all real, all real pictures, real footage, and all that. Have you seen it? I don't think so. Like I feel because they did not take like archive footage and like they they um they up, they know, upscaled it, it and yeah, yeah. they colorized it and all that. So I feel like I've seen bits of it. Yeah. I, there's just a, there's a part in it where, like, I would I would just tell people just in case people might not be in here. But obviously, it was World War One, so it's a fucking absolute one of the most like horrendous wars that's ever happened, right? It's shown you like this footage of like people, guys that are like smiling, carrying the ammunition boxes. They're sitting with their cup of tea and like doing that to the camera and all that stuff. And it's and then it pans back over all the guys, right? And it shows you their face, and then it shows you their fucking mangled body in the mud, and it's that guy. But it's real footage, like actual like pictures of this these actual events. So it's the guy smiling with his mug, and then it's him lying in the mud, and his bottom jaw's gone, yeah. and all that. And it's just like, and I, I remember watching that, just going, "What the fuck, man?" Because it's all these guys happily dancing about the trenches, and then it shows you the exact same guy with like his legs gone. And all that, and it's just, it's it's a fucking horrific. It's one of those things where I'm not calling it a bad movie. I'm saying it's a great movie, but it's a horrendous movie. I, I think <laughs> um, you know that's the kind of thing that we should see more of, though. And it sounds um, yeah. it sounds weird to say it, but like that's the reality of war. Not just the First World War, but any war. Yeah, you know, people are going to get torn up and and destroyed and mangled in the most horrific ways but that's like the like happens. the fucking reddit battalion going out to ukraine and all that bullshit because they yeah. think war was not was not i just wanted to do something during my gap year you know so yeah decided to go be a fucking gun for hire in ukraine like fuck off you fucking I, I, I would never fucking do that fuck that 
absolute last <laughs> resort, man. Like you, people come back for those places, absolutely fucked up for the rest of their life. I, I like just, it's not fun. It's not a fun like experience to go and do. I, I just imagine the reaction of guys who fought in World War One or World War Two because most like World War One, they're all gone. World War Two, they're mostly gone yeah. now as well. Um, just to to talk to those people and you know. What would they think of these fucking idiots who go out there? It's like we had the same fucking attitude as you back then. We were young and stupid, and we we had these romantic notions of what war was going to be. There's yeah. nothing like that. Please don't do this. You know, <laughs> it's like, but it, enough time passes, you lose all these people. They're not around to remind us of this stuff, and so you get a new generation of idiots who want to do it. You know, and, and that's why films like that are so important uh, it, it's like you, you and you shouldn't you shouldn't shy away from the horrifying reality of it you shouldn't shy away from like the the gory footage or whatever because they yeah. recorded that for a reason that's what actually happens that's what's going to happen to you if you go to places like this yeah um, it was it was it main character syndrome where everyone goes there and goes i'll probably come back alive because i'm the main character in my story the main character doesn't die you're you're gonna die you're gonna, well, I mean, you've got just as much chance as everybody else of getting killed. Like the, there's so many fucking people that, uh, that when they come back from war, it's a big mixture of skill and absolute blind fucking luck. There's got to be well, there's got to be yeah, yeah a bit of luck to it. Um, but yeah, I remember um, like we we talked about this before on my channel, like the end of Blackadder goes forth, where it's all this like light hearted kind of comedy about being in the the trenches in world war one and then they go over the top they all just get mown down within the first few seconds like none yeah. of them make it more than a few yards that that's the reality that's what happens you know yep um, yeah next one from samuel infamous says i don't see the 40k connection seems like they'd be more likely to run into uh naya naya lato tep uh, or Yogg-Sagoth <laughs> than Korn or Slaanesh. Uh, yeah, okay, they must be like, um, you know, Lovecraftian monsters rather yeah, than 40k so. ones. I don't know, like, I, I think, I'm sure the directors come out and said that he was a fan of 40k, and so that's partly the inspiration for it. That makes uh, sense. RSE Elman says, fantastic movie, uh, Liberati Tute Me Ex Infernis. <laughs> <laughs> that bit as well in the movie where he's going, oh, he didn't actually say save me. He actually says, don't come here. There's Satan and devil all over the fucking place. And they were like, ah, we could have used that information earlier. Thanks. The like... <laughs> thing is, right, if I, if I was in that dude's situation and I wanted to warn people, like, don't come here, don't do this, I wouldn't say it in Latin. I would say it just in plain old Queen's English. Like, this is yeah. horrible. Don't ever use the gravity drive. Don't come here. Go away now. You know? I, was, I, I, think it's, I think it's because they went to hell and because it's all biblical and shit, they made it Latin or something. Like, yeah. oh, I went to hell and I speak Latin now. Or something I, like I, that. You, you know that bit? I, I love this, actually. Um, they're on the, the bridge of their spaceship. They're about to go on their mission. And they're like, Dr. Weir says to them, uh, yeah, so we managed to get one transmission from the event horizon. And this is what we got. And it's just like horrific screams of agony. <laughs> yeah. And just like, you know, horrible, like people suffering unbelievable torment. I think at that point I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling it today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit this one out. <laughs> just, uh, they, were, they were already in space at that point, weren't they? They were already like flying towards it. Were they? Oh, okay. I, I, I think so. And it's sort of like, I mean, I would I, see if I was like one of the guys in that ship. I'd be like, I don't know, man. I kind of wish we get debriefed on this before we took off. Yeah. You know, man. I mean, I would have definitely negotiated a higher rate if I knew that like, that is what we were flying towards. <laughs> I don't think this is a, like. I mean, someone might be stranded on like a mining colony off an asteroid or something. I mean, that I can do. That I can do. But, but uh, space hell. <laughs> that's, that's, that's something a wee bit different, mate. I'm I'm definitely going to want uh, overtime rates for this. <laughs> I, I, I love this one actually. This is. Uh... <laughs> You know when they see that that crew log of like the previous event horizon crew yeah. like just sodomizing themselves into annihilation and then like they switch it off and then uh, Lawrence Fishburne just looks at it for a moment and goes we're leaving <laughs> 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 
Uh, like, I mean, That's a perfect smart. reaction, really. Yeah, yeah, smart though. Yeah. Uh, um, JT says, what are you looking at over there, Dank? Don't worry, I'm sure the drinker will split these with you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's, not how it, that's not how it works, unfortunately. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, mail it to me. Uh, Akumu X says, Drinker, when you arrived in USA, did you shriek at the sight of the sun as I heard uh, Justice Dankula did? I heard they don't have the sun in Scotland. Um, well, we're we're pretty much at that point of the year where the sun goes away for about six months. So, yeah. yeah. This is this is where I have to start going on foreign holidays just to keep the rickets at bay. <laughs> 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 I tell you, if you see a Scottish guy going on holiday in around February, March time, it's like uh, it's like that bit in Blade where the guy gets exposed to the sunlight, like the sunrise for the first time. Like ah, <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Um, next one is from Deleted Scenes. Uh, Hail Drinker and Dankula and Chat. Event Horizon, a classic sci-fi horror film that I never get tired of. Saw it first uh, during its theatrical run back in the day. Nice. I I wish I'd been old enough to see it in the cinema. It was just, uh, yeah, I was only about 12 or something when it came out, so didn't quite make it. When was it? 97? Yeah. I was 10. (laughs) So no. (laughs) You son of a bitch. I know. (laughs) Uh, Carrier, a Raccoon City story, says, uh, Evening Drinker, I was curious to know if you'd seen both the episodes of Carrier yet. There's technically two together. The pilot set in The Outbreak and Episode 2, A Cold Awakening, set in the winter of 95. Anyhow, cheers, and Episode 2 is out soon. Uh, so I think I'd seen the main one, which like focuses on the, the, the sort of main action in the present day. Um, this guy's... Uh, yeah, he's producing like a, a noir detective story done in the style of, like you know, those cut scenes during the Max Payne games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like that, but set in Raccoon City during the, the outbreak in Resident Evil 2. So it's, okay. uh, ah, it's really good stuff. It's cool. Um, and I know that, uh, yeah, he he posted on um, Residents of Evil when they got all the, the original actors from the, the first Resident Evil game in. They were doing like a playthrough of like the first Resident Evil game. Um, I, that just seemed like it would be the best stream ever to be on. Like I wish I'd seen it. Live, were the, were the OG were the OG voice actors or the actual physical actors for like the, the actual physical actors? Yeah, wasn't wasn't there one per, one of them that they were trying to track down for like fucking years but nobody could find her? It's I'm the pretty woman, sure yeah, that played it, Jill. I, I still don't think they found her, but they found like Chris, they found Barry, they found Wesker. Um, but this woman's just vanished in one of the most iconic PS1 games of like all time. This woman just vanished off the face of the earth, and it no one's like a bit. It, yeah. When do you report it as a murder? The, well, the guy that played <laughs> Chris even was like, until a couple of years ago, he had no idea that Resident Evil was a thing. He had no idea it was popular because he wasn't into video games or anything like that. And he's like. Uh, you know, I, it was only because someone managed to track me down through social media and got in touch with me, and he was like, "Oh shit, yeah, I remember that thing that I did back in 1995 or something that I filmed <laughs> in Japan." And it's like, really, it's a big thing, it's a big deal, and like suddenly, yeah, he's he's like doing all these live streams and stuff. But I just think it's it's cool, but it's sad in a way because it's like imagine all the things that they could have gone to, all the conventions, all the the appearances that they could have done. Just yeah, having no clue that like this thing was like totally famous. Um, yeah, it's it's a funny little thing, but uh, aye, there it is. But yeah, no one's ever been able to track down the the actress that played Jill. So, you know, <laughs> if uh, if you're out there, um, Jill Valentine, actress from 1995, <laughs> <in Resident laughs> Evil. I think get, she's dead. <laughs> I think she might have been murdered or something. Yeah, I think she. I think she, she, I think she might have been a Russian that just doesn't give a shit, really. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. She got flown over from Russia to Japan. I, I think that must be what it is. She doesn't really could, care. It could well be. Uh, it could well be. Um, She's living in is... some backwater village called Gabrinsk or some shit. <laughs> That's Actually, like a popular... she's, she's in Ukraine right now. Uh, Web Addict says, I'm playing Dead Space right now, and you can just tell it's Event Horizon the game. When you get the chance, drinker, play the original and the remake. There we go. Um, LJA says reading Redemption right now can't put it down need sleep 
Well, that's all right. Just listen to me talk and I'll put you to sleep. Uh, but yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for the support. Lord Trinan says, sequel idea. Part of the ship's evil spirit is hiding in Justin and compels him to find a way to open the portal to hell again and create hell on Earth. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> I did hear that they were going to do a Event Horizon TV series. That was apparently a thing that they were going to do. All right. No idea if it's going to come to anything or whatever. I'm sure it'll be just as good as the Resident Evil TV series. On nah, Netflix. they'll probably go shit all over it as well. Mm. Dr. Weir will be a black trans woman. They, of, they, uh, they get uh, transported into hell and it's just a sea of white people. Yeah, this, with, red, this with is, red MAGA hats on. Yeah. <laughs> this is their uh, idea of hell. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mithir Tabber says, uh, Hank Pym, first Chuck of the MCU. Hope Kang uh, has half siblings. Uh, okay. Um, Steve Johns says, I know someone who worked on building the sets for Event Horizon. He told me that the, there was some pretty extreme footage not included in the finished product. Get this man on. I, In fact, yeah, we should do this, right? Sometime. I want people who worked on Event Horizon, whether you were an extra, a porn star, preferably, who was in it, um, preferably, <laughs> preferably female. Yeah. Um, if you were in Event Horizon, I want you to contact me and we'll do a live stream. I want a debriefing of what happened on the set of that movie. And we're going to get to the truth, God damn it, right here yeah. on this channel. I do kind of want to know what happened. I want to know <laughs> what happened behind the scenes. I want to know what got left on the cotton room, room floor and then abandoned in an underground dungeon in Transylvania. I need <laughs> yeah. to know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Brown's only got 22 subs. He needs to get to a thousand. We're almost there. Come on. I believe in you. Um, Matt DeWolf says, Drinker, write the script for a new sequel and put, uh, toss it on Kickstarter. We've got you. Thank you. I feel like the door's open for all kinds of shit now. I want to make my own Resident Evil movie. You know what I'll, I'll do? I'll make a <laughs> Resident Evil that's actually true to the games and I'll just say, look, here you go, Capcom. I can do this. Give me, give me like a hundred million dollars. I'll do you a fantastic film. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'd love to do it. Anyway, um, t what's that? Tarmanel says, uh, "What do you think about when the film is presented at the beginning with a historical text like Horizon? I personally like it for feeling uh, of anchoring the film in reality, but a lot of people hate it. So I think what they're saying is like." Um, it's trying to give you like a wee timeline of what happens, like the first deep space mission and all that. Yeah. And the event horizon gets launched and all that. I thought it was fine. No, I don't mind that. It's just a little bit of just extrapolation of the history, just so you know where you are. Yeah. And all that. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem with that. Um, Julius Caminius says, Drinker, you should do one of these with Cecil from Good Vad Flicks. His video on Event Horizon is excellent and goes into a lot of behind the scenes things that you mentioned. It would be great to have you two together. I, I've seen his video actually. If you ever get the chance, watch Good Bad Flicks on Event Horizon. Um, it's got loads of really cool information about like behind the scenes, how they made the film and stuff. Like, you know, that corridor that you talked about before where it's like a just a giant fucking yeah. salad spinner um the the actors couldn't walk down that without falling over because it disrupts your your sense of balance uh, so yeah, I, yeah i can see that because it makes you feel like you're going with it yeah yeah, yeah. I can see and that. so there's footage of them trying to walk down it and they just fucking immediately keel over <laughs> and so they had to run down it just with their eyes closed it's the only way to get through it that's um, fucking mad that's funny yeah. the, there was a great bit as well from uh, i think it was jason isaacs right um they they got a gym installed in like near the set so that the actors could work out and Lawrence Fishburne was there and one of the things was that that weird thing where you um you hook yourself onto like a, a bar overhead by like your feet and you just hang upside down you can do like crunches yeah and so Lawrence Fishburne was hanging from that upside down and so Jason comes into the gym and like they got to talking and like Lawrence Fishburne discussed a, a bunch of scenes that they were going to do with each other just like hanging upside down, cool as a cucumber. And then after about 10 minutes, he sort of says to him, like, uh, could you help me down off this thing because I'm stuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> he couldn't get off it. 
I love when he sat there chatting for like ten minutes before he finally. Yeah, he didn't went. want to. He didn't want to like yeah. lead with that. He's like, I've got to make this cool. I got to. I got to make this uh, all right. You know, we'll just chat and work a bit <laughs> for a while. That's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, I'll do a few more and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll finish up. Um, Disco Cobra says Event Horizon was an insane movie. It was uh, a little squeamish during certain scenes, so I was. Uh, I've seen all of the Saw movies, but still definitely deserves its cult status. Good horror movie. Love the acting. Uh, can't can't deny it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Charles Hurst says, I always like the fan theory that turns Event Horizon into a Warhammer 40k prequel. They tried transiting the warp without a Geller field. That's what it does to you, man. Yeah. Uh, Big Dave K says, If you've all seen it, I strongly recommend the 1981 film Galaxy of Terror. I think it's on par with Event Horizon. Uh, even James Cameron worked on it. I didn't know about that, actually. What was that called? Galaxy of Terror. That terror is in, like, Warhammer Terror? No terror as in fear. All right. 1981. A rescue ship crew meets up with horror. Ah, okay. Does sound familiar. And it's so 80s. Ah. Oh. Who's in it? It's uh, so 80s. Hold on. Uh, <clears throat> Director Bruce D. Clark stars Edward Albert, Erin Morin, and Ray Walston. <laughs> Never heard of any of them. No, but I'm, I'm looking at it and it's very 80s B movie. Like big <laughs> time. Yeah. <laughs> did Did you ever watch The Black Hole? It was like a Disney movie, I think. It was no. like late 70s, early 80s. No, well, no like I've a, never even heard of that. It feels a bit like Event Horizon where it's like this crew discovers a, a spaceship that had supposedly gone missing like 20 years earlier and it's got like a mad scientist on board and he's planning to take the ship into a black hole that's nearby. They're like orbiting around it. Um, and it, it kind of seems like a cutesy Disney movie to some extent. Like they've got like a, a robot there that's like animatronic and stuff and it's it's all like kind of fun. Um, but then it actually goes through the black hole and it feels like they, they go to actual hell because you get this like horrific vision of like this blasted like fiery hellscape with like the the, the main antagonist. He's been merged with like a, a robotic fucking like servant that he had on board the ship and he's like trapped inside it forever. And it's like weird, like awful imagery. Um, right. It's just called the black hole. But yeah, it's such a it's such a weird tonal shift in a film. I've never seen anything quite like it before. It always stuck with me. I'm making yeah, wait, wait, we go. Uh, Maximilian, that was the name of the robot. Maximilian for the win. Because <laughs> uh, I'm needing to get some film. Because I'm doing a fucking five and a half hour train journey tomorrow. So, are uh, you going I'm, to London? I'm going to. Oh, in fact, uh, well, Comic Comic Con. I was trying to keep it under wraps, but I'm going to Comic Con. Hey, thanks at Comic Con. You shouldn't nah. keep that under wraps. People will want to see you. Yeah, but <laughs> no, you don't have literal terrorist groups that want to kill you. <laughs> well, not yet, anyway. I'm walking up to that. Nah, fucking. I was one. I was meant to be coming down with the wife and everything, but she's pregnant, and she was like, "Oh, this modern sickness is absolutely beating the shit out of me." Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to go, but. I don't want to ruin it for you as well, so you can just go down with your friends. And I'm like, oh, are you sure? Are you sure, my love? Oh, I feel really bad leaving you behind. <laughs> I would feel, oh, oh okay. Oh, I suppose. Like, <laughs> go it's like when I went to Tampa, it's like, well, I've got an all-expenses-paid trip to Florida for a week. It's like, oh, man, this yeah. is so fun. <laughs> 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 what can I do? No, I'm I'm actually gutted that she isn't coming with me, but what, what, what can you do? Yeah, I wish. I honestly, I wish I was going to London um, Comic Con. It would have been good to meet up with you, or say hello, or something. You know, uh, uh, I'd have been a good laugh. I, I always, I always get shit faced whenever I'm down there as well. Well, it's the thing to do, isn't it? Like, yeah, buy, you... but I, I literally buy like old rare magic sets and then spend too fucking much on them, and then get shit faced and buy more. 
I think that's what a lot of the booths like rely on at Comic Con is just people being shit faced and it's like, oh, that was, that was cool. I'll buy that. Oh, the guy, the guy that runs that stall like knows me and not because of my YouTube channel. It's like he smiles like, oh, it's this fucking guy again. Nice. I'm on at least a couple hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm feeling like, yes, me again. Nice. <laughs> Smell more of your shit cards. <laughs> um, Josh Brooks says, Drinker, do you wish that Dead Space could be turned into a film? Who would you want to be directing it? And if, it, uh, if it's so... Uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to see that turned into a film. It's just video game adaptations into movies. They've got a long and sordid track history. None of them have really succeeded. So, yeah, I don't know who I'd want us to. I'd, I'd want to do it. Maybe Paul W. S. Anderson from nineteen ninety seven would be a good choice. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know who could make it work now. Um, Dr. Lion Hunter says, Drinker, we need a happy hour about Sunshine. It has many parallels with Event Horizon. Yeah, Sunshine's an interesting one. I don't know if you've seen it, Dank. I haven't seen it, but it has interested me. Um, it's something that I have actually wanted to watch, but I'll be back in a second. I've been holding a piss in. I'll be back. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Go for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one is Gerald Armstrong says, you guys practically live across the street from each other. What's with the double cameras? Yeah, well, you know, he's still about 50 miles away from me or something, so I can't just, like, walk over to his house and do this stuff. I mean, I've tried to turn up there before, but he just keeps tasering me, so what can I say? Uh, yeah, we, we had to do it like this tonight, so I'd like... Uh, Anthony Porter says, there was talk of a TV series version a couple of years back. I have no faith that it would be good. Neither do I. Yeah, I'd heard about that TV series, and... Um, yeah, weirdly, nothing ever came of it. It just kind of died a death. Weird. Um, Mad Hatter says, "What do you think about the second? The, sorry, the two Doctor Who episodes, The Impossible Planet and the Sa the Satan Pit, Dave and Tennant's first season. If they were influenced by this film, cool streams as usual, drinker. Um, Christ, now you're going back. Um, the Impossible Planet. No, I don't quite see the connection to Event Horizon. Um." Yeah, there there was a lot less like um, porn stars and like sexual destructive nudity, you know, Satanism and stuff. Um, yeah, I would like, I would love to see Doctor Who go full Event Horizon. To be fair, um, Obian Wahid says, has, any, "Has anyone seen Netflix Teletubbies trailer?" Uh, no, I haven't. I'm sure it's the <laughs> stuff of nightmares, though. Are they, are they remaking Teletubbies? I hope they do, yeah. Oh, um, fuck. Have you ever seen those pictures? It's like Teletubbies, but it's a horror film, and they've got, like, black eyes and, you know... No, I've never seen those. And and stuff. No, but I've, I've, for some reason, like, the TV that I've got, whenever I turn it on, it defaults to this channel that just plays the Teletubbies all the fucking time. Jesus. And everyone is like, even, even my daughter doesn't like it. And everyone, this is a this is a little baby bum household. There's no cocoa melon in here. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can uh, bring this up. Uh... Hold on. Uh... <clears throat> uh... Yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, I'll just show you this. This so uh, this is Teletubbies, but it's a horror movie. So right. Uh, wait, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> and it's just that's that's what they look like. But you know, it just takes a new filter, and away you go. You know, that's just like cult found footage like fucking type stuff man like an old snuff film yeah <laughs> like fuck's sake it's like we got lost on the moors one day and then we just woke <laughs> up and those things were fucking coming at us <laughs> Do I, remake dog soldiers but it's the fucking teletubbies like fucking yeah. coming after you <laughs> oh my god yeah i'm gonna get neil marshall on the phone we'll get that sorted like honestly i had him on once actually talking about dog soldiers it was fantastic it was like a uh, childhood dream come true no, we, used to, we used to do that for uh, to take the piss, see, because we used to do the static uh, security for all the wind farms away out in the middle of nowhere. If anybody didn't have anything to do, we would give them the DVD player, and the only DVD that was in it was Dog Soldiers. 
Yeah, and, le- and then we're leaving them in a security cabin in the middle of the moors, <laughs> like overnight. <laughs> and we'll be like, anyway, there's no signal here, so we'll see you at seven in the morning to change the guard. Yeah, <laughs> man. So I used to fuck with people all the time. I still love that movie. Honestly, it was so good. I haven't yeah. seen it in a very long time. Long, Honestly, long rewatch time it. Like it. it still holds up now. Like the dialogue and everything's amazing. Like the characters yeah. are great. The action scenes are really good fun. Um, yeah, there's so many homages to like other movies, like little Easter eggs and stuff. Love it. Um, Tonwin says, "Your Honor, what's your next Supreme <clears throat> Judge order for uh, Justice Dankula?" Oh, I've retired that bit for now. I think I'm Henry the Eighth now. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, I'm Henry the Eighth now. I'm getting hard to like keep up with this. The the I Justice know, Dankula I'm... stuff, honestly, man, that was the stuff of legend. It would be really um, hard. We, we to were beat seeing that. it all unfolding when we were on Friday night tights, and it was yeah. like <laughs> people sharing <laughs> pictures of like they'd photoshopped your face into like the the list of Supreme Court judges, yeah. and just put like above it like Mark Dankula and then like a whole biography for you and stuff. I was I was the one thing that blew me away the most was the amount of people that believed that they believed that I there was actually a Justice <laughs> Dankula and I was like because I did it going this is going to get seen through in like five seconds because I did, I previously did one where I was pretending to be a terrorist like yeah. laughing at America withdrawing and that one you could get away with right but the Supreme Court judges everyone knows their fucking names but for some reason shit tons of fucking people believed that I was real there was a real Justice Dankula yeah an old man who was threatening to make women illegal, yeah. <laughs> you know that, and people were people were reacting to it like it was something a justice actually said. <laughs> Fucking ah, oh, Americans, man, they're fun. They're 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 something else. It's special, like it really <laughs> is. Um, Walken says, "Where we're going, well, you don't need eyes to see." That line is very disturbing when you know what they're talking about. Hell, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Andy Swainson says, Liberate tutte me ex infernis. Love this film, one of my favourites. Nice one. Samuel the Infamous says, Madeleine uh, Langle made the folded space metaphor popular in A Wrinkle in Time in 1962. Fuck, there I'm going to have go. to take your word for that one, man. Um, but she wasn't uh, She wasn't Sam Neill, so she doesn't get any credit from me. Uh, <laughs> Dan Brackman says, My old... Band screaming torso wrote a bunch of songs about horror movies and pseudoscience. Look it up on SoundCloud. You're the best drinker. Thank you very much. Um, so supporting three hundred says big fan, but you're all wrong about Black Adam. Stupid writing, yeah, but the great and brutal action plus fun outweighs all the cons. It deserves more credit. I mean, I gave it a, a, a sort of cautious thumbs up. So <laughs> yeah, best I can do really. Um, Seth Ritchie says, my two favourite YouTubers. Love you both. Thank you. Um, Michael Pellegrini gave me $10, so thank you. Pirate Skeleton says, Event Horizon is a better Doom movie than any of the actual Doom adaptations. Oh, that would God. be hard, really. Oh. I, want to see, I want to see that in pictures, I'm sure. Fucking Doom. The Carl uh, Urban one. Ah, uh, it was terrible. That was that was sad, sad times. Yeah. <laughs> How can you fuck up Doom? It's not like it's a complex story or anything. It's, it's like just go in and just like be big stupid guys with like big guns and everything. Like that's all you had to do. And it's like Rock, yeah, okay, I can see the Rock like being Doom guy, but instead they made him the bad guy and all that. And it's just ah, it was dumb. Yeah. Not even not even the good kind of dumb. Just yeah, just depressing dumb. Um, yeah, Daryl Smith says, "Holy shit, is that an act? Is that a big trouble in little China, China shirt?" Yeah, <laughs> Wing Kong Enterprises, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> got to do it. Um, love, uh, love Event Horizon, and both of you and Dan Kilo are two of my favorite YouTubers. Cheers, fellas. Thank you. See, uh, see how wholesome all of these super chats have been. Yeah, I know they're all lovely. Lovely. Yeah, they're they're going to turn the tide now. They'll be like, "Drinker, I hope you die <laughs> in a pool of your own blood or something." <laughs> Um, Miss, sorry, crazy Mister Gigabyte says Black Adam was hot CGI garbage. Fun does not mean good. Holy shit! It's like the duality of man on this stream. Four three seven THX says, "What was better, Event Horizon or Alien?" Close, but I'll go with Alien. I, I would uh, think Alien. Alien's probably better. Yeah, I would say Alien. Uh, Maybe if Alien biased. had the Doctor Weir <laughs> scream in it, then I would be a happy man. <laughs> 
I'm just trying to picture him in like the vent with the fucking thing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Seth, Seth Ritchie says John Carpenter wants to do Dead Space. Yeah, I was, I knew that was him. If anyone could, he could, uh, but depends on the studio. I just, I, I think he's too fucking old now. Um, it's been too long. I, I wouldn't really want him to do it. Uh, there's only a couple more, and then I've done. So Andrew Lidner says. There's a really cool detail on Weir's jacket. He has an Australian flag, but the Union Jack has been replaced by the Aboriginal flag. Uh, yeah, that's because Sam Neill is from New Zealand. And so, um, yeah, he want, he got a chance to design that insignia himself, apparently. And he figured by that point in the future, they would have been uh, changed over away from the, the UK. So, yeah, nice little detail. Don't mind it too much. It's a cool little thing to do. Um V Matey says, have you both played Alien Isolation? I think you've probably played it. I've completed it like six times. It's a fucking excellent game. It's really good. See if I'm building like tension and freaking you out. And by the way, the scariest thing in that game is not the alien. It's it's the fucking working Joes. See, see if they ever... I, I, I hate the fact that Disney actually currently own the rights to the alien universe, but see if they want to make like a truly scary like fucking enemy... Put in the working Joes. They're terrifying. Are they, are they synths? They're synths, but their face, the, but their, their faces and skins haven't been like applied properly. You can just tell it's like it's got wrinkles in it and shit, and all that because it's not been put on right. And they're, it's the way they speak. It's horrible. There's just this uncanny valley, like horrible thing. Like you've just watched one like murder someone, and you're running away from it, and it's slowly walking after you. Like why are you running in the hall? Uh, <laughs> no man it's like I'm going to catch you and it's just so horrible it's so unsettling what are they, honestly see if they make a movie with that by the way there'll be so many memes and everything because they're just I, that bad I, I've often thought right this is what makes great horror is like the, the normal turned abnormal you know the, the idea of like a, a friendly yeah. helpful butler type character but just turned slightly horrific and maniacal like they, they're still talking like they want to help you and stuff but they're like coming at you like threatening like they're going to murder you uh, that was... their faces do doesn't quite it's almost human but not quite there there was a movie i watched recently about that and it was about a guy trying to create like an ai of his dead wife and i thought that was the path they were going to go down because he made two iterations before one iteration is this big blocky stupid looking robot but this one only managed to achieve the intelligence of like a six-year-old. So it's like his wife, but when she was six, so she's like a dumb kid. Then the other, then the next one he made managed to get his wife till she was like 16 years old. So she's about that age, so still very immature and all that type of stuff as well. And then he starts working on the third one. And this is going to be the final one where he'll actually get his wife back and it'll be proper and good. But the 16-year-old starts getting jealous like, oh, why don't you just work on me more? Like, I could be better, I could be this. And there's this whole sinister thing where the second robot doesn't actually really have a face. It just has, like, this weird screen. And see whenever he's doing stuff in the room and the thing's just staring at him and, like, not moving but following him around the room. See, because there's just no expression. It's so fucking sinister. Hmm. And it's actually kind of like she's sabotaging shit in the background. And you think that's the path the movie's going to go down. And then the ending just completely ruins it and the whole film becomes retarded. <laughs> and like so Aww. stupid. I thought, oh, is this all like an AI rising against its master because it doesn't want to be deleted or replaced? And it's actually showing jealousy to like his new project. I thought, oh, this would be a brilliant thing to explore. This would be great. Oh, wait, it was all fake and none of that was real. All right, great, cool. That's I was stupid. It was just dumb. They ruined it. That could have been good. Oh. It, it's such a because I think that's part of the reason why they they had that whole trope of masked killers in, especially in the eighties, in those slasher films like yeah. uh, Halloween or you know, uh, the the um, not Michael Myers. What's the other one? Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Friday the Thirteenth movies. It's like, it's not the mask that's frightening. It's what's behind it, the fact that you can't see it and you don't know what's there. I think that's what an interesting aspect of horror. You, you don't don't know who or what it is. Yeah, like, yeah, because it doesn't have facial expressions. There, there's no humanity that you can tie into, and I think yeah. that's an, an interesting thing. You know, like probably what made that that movie so intimidating and so like unnerving is the. I fact even that like it when they're human. silent. 
when they're totally silent when they don't even speak. Yeah, and all that as well. I like that. Yeah, uh, we got Mr. Brown over a thousand subs, so yay, we did it. Nice one. Congratulations, Smashing. man. You're monetized now. Welcome to the hellhole that is YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's only a couple more. Yeah, uh, actually, we did the quartering already. So crazy, Mr. Gigabyte says, "Dank inspired me to explore my heritage. I'm buying a kilt." <laughs> they're not as, they're not as comfortable as you might think. By the way, if you're if you're going as a true Scotsman, they chafe pretty badly. It's oh like yeah, coarse wool. Yeah. So yeah. Not as, not as fun as you might think to wear a kilt, but hey, it does look good. Especially if you walk down the street in like America, you'll get a lot of attention with a kilt on. <laughs> it's one of those things like in Scotland, you, you kind of have to rent them for weddings and stuff like that. So you're usually They're fucking just, expensive. They're yeah, fucking you're usually expensive better just buying one, and so yeah. you've kind of got it there ready to go. Uh, but yeah, like uh, there's. I'll, I'll probably finish up the super chats and stuff there. Like, there's a few more I'll do on a, on a catch up stream. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody for for donating tonight and for pitching in. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed our our kind of chaotic breakdown of Event Horizon. <laughs> we jumped around all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I did that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Dank, thanks for coming on, man. No, nah, no this. problem, man. It's all good. It was good being back again. Um. Yeah, we got Mr. Brown over a thousand subs, and uh, yeah, I'll put a link to Mr. Mr. Dankula's channel in the description when I re-upload this. So if you, if you're not subscribed to him already, I'm sure most of you have already. Please do because uh, he produces amazing content. His a mad lad series is just beautiful. <laughs> <I love> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, otherwise we will we will catch you later. That's all we've got for today. So uh, go away now.